any farther than this. The University of Washington Huskies have traveled 3,303 miles to take on the Miami Hurricanes. And yet, two head coaches, graduates of Everett High School, about to go head to head. Hello, everybody. I'm Don Poyer with my pal Sonny Sixkiller. Rare attire, no jackets. The reason? I think it's you can warm. tell by the sparkles <laughs> on our head. It's very warm, 86 degrees in the humidity at about 72 percent so it's a very very warm day and let's get into football Sonny first off offensively can Washington control the two defensive tackles Warren Sapp and Pat Riley of Miami. Well I think they're going to have to Don because the key for Miami's defense is to try and spread us out use their speed and control Napoleon uh, Kaufman. Now if we can do a good job of the offensive line against those two down linemen we'll have a lot of success today. Conversely, Jim Lambright of the Huskies says the key defensively, we just can't give up any big plays today. They have a lot of speed, Don. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I got tired of seeing 4-2, 4-3, 4-4, 4-5, four, two, four, three, four, <laughs> four, four, five, and uh, even their linemen are running four or something, so <laughs> it's going to be a real test for us. All right. Well, it's time for the kickoff, but let's get to it. We've traveled too far to sit around much longer. It's Washington against the Miami Hurricanes here from the OB, the Orange Bowl, home of Cortez Kennedy. We'll be back. the OB as Cortez Kennedy does when we talk to him off and up in Seattle. Sunny Six Killer, I'm Don Poyer. We've got a very warm day as I said earlier, 86 degrees, pretty good overcast, 72 percent humidity. Miami wins the toss. They will be kicking. I will ask our statistician Jeff McClain, did they defer or they chose to? We're receiving Don. Okay. Well, I'm just wondering if they deferred or okay. They they have chosen to kick. They want to defend. Okay. So we'll have the Washington offense on the field first. Some 3,000 Huskies up in the stands here that have made the trip either via the crews or coming down on separate airplanes, commercial or charter. And there are some of them there. They're up as the Huskies look at the field. They are to the left and behind the players, up rather high. Not bad seats at all for some 3,000 people. There you go. You can see where they are on what is a very, very <laughs> muggy day for Sonny Sixkiller and Don Poyer, let alone the players down below trying to get ready for this one. This does not feel like a ball game that is being played in its first meeting between Washington and Miami for obvious reasons. You've got the 61 graduate of Everett High School, Jim Lambright, coaching this team. And Dennis Erickson, the 65 graduate of Everett High School coaching Miami. As Jim comes in, Dennis Erickson admits that Lambeau was his idol back when he was a youngster in Everett. And Jim was going through his stardom as an athlete for the Seagulls and on to the University of Washington. So it's a family feud of sorts over 3,300 miles away from where most of the family is. Napoleon Kaufman. Rashawn Sheehy awaiting the kick from Dane Pruitt, who is the kicker and is notorious for his short kicks. Not necessarily all that strong a leg, but he will kick it from the left hash mark. Either one of these players, and of course, as you know, Husky fans at home, they won't show their hand as to who's going which way until just before the kicker is about to do his thing. Kaufman coming off a career high, 211 yards, Sonny. He is ready to roll, Don. This one deep and so much for the reputation for Dane Pruitt as he nails it well beyond Napoleon Kaufman into the end zone as Kaufman Damon Heward and Richard Thomas will be in the backfield Thomas may be a key man possible injury we'll get it for you in a moment there are the tight ends and receivers Bruner the All-American and Bjornsson with the big receptions against USC Peterson and Highfield two of the married players on this team and the rest of the folks up front for Washington on offense. Was that Richard Thomas they helped off, Sonny? Well, he stayed in the game, Don, but what happened was he tried to get a big block on the kickoff and just got his bell slightly wrong. That is Warren Sapp. Some consider number 76 to be the best defensive lineman in the country. We'll see. First and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Kaufman in the backfield, and they're going to throw right off the bat. Going across the middle, going after the tight end, Bruner. 
Too high over the head of Pearson. The safety for Miami. The people up front, Pat Riley and Warren Sapp. They are outstanding athletes up front indeed. Russell, Lewis, a couple of youngsters who played as pure freshmen last year. Burgess, the other outside linebacker. C.J. Richardson leads this crew of outstanding players. Three of them seniors. Chad Wilson, youngster who came over, transferred from Long Beach State when they dropped the football program out on the West Coast. There's Pat Riley. He's one of those that anchors along with Sapp inside of the defensive tackle. Janowski goes in motion on second and ten. Hopkins gets maybe one as the Hurricanes were waiting for him. There's a man done 76 we'll probably be calling his name most of the afternoon. Hopefully we can get a job done on him later on. But right now he uh, first play looked great. Sap on TV last night made it very clear. We don't want to just stop him. We want to really bump him. Here's a good look. We're trying to get a double team on him. One guy shifts off but he fought it up great. Look at that body strength. Trevor Highfield number 79 trying to go one on one with the big man Warren Sapp who is just a junior. Third down and nine. Looking to throw goes to Thomas way over the head of Richard. So it is time to punt. Chad Wilson defending along with Malcolm Pearson and the ever so dangerous punt returner. Jamie German will be out there for Dennis Erickson. Number 47. Jeff Number 47, Prince. Jeff Prince, the junior who struggled against Ohio State at that long punt of 50 yards. That was his first punt as a Husky at being down at SC. Jamie German had a couple of big breakers against ASU and flagged down just before the snap. We have a Big East crew today. John Safi is the referee. Washington and trying to as we get the call here to fight the heat and humidity have several fans and crews on the football spray. There's no penalty. The defense, the defense, Evidently, no penalty. defense caused the offense to move. Therefore, it's no penalty. Fourth down. Washington's possession is all of 46 seconds for Lambeau in their first try. Everybody feeling each other out right now. Sapp and Riley looking tough so far up the middle. Wobbly, somewhat short punt to German who called the fair catch on his own 43. So it'll be first and ten for these gentlemen. James Stewart, he'll look a lot like Eddie George did for Ohio State. Real good, sound, big athlete. Jonathan Harris is the tailback, primarily a wide receiver, and you saw Costa, the quarterback. Jones is his top receiver in terms of numbers. The tight end, Daphnis, and Jamie German, who had a couple of 50-yard-plus breakaways last uh, week or two weeks ago against Arizona State. And the big people up front, anchored by Zev Lumelski, Lumelski rather, an immigrant who came over in 1982 from Israel and the Soviet Union. We'll talk about that as the day goes on. First and ten for Frank Costa and the Hurricanes with three wide receivers to the right side. Stewart is behind him. All on their own, 44, and Stewart gets the first call. Good first down gain up to the 49 yard, about five yards, as Steve Hoffman will lead the folks up front along with Deke Beavers. Iwaliko getting the start, even though David Ritchie is now helping Schmidt back in the lineup now. He's healthy after the ankle injury in camp. Fiala, he will not start today. Should be Ink Aliaga. And the secondary. So it's second down in five after the five yard gain. Ball on the 49 of Miami. Two wide outs to the right side and one to the left. Trying to go across the middle. Reggie Reeser is there with him. Huskies are saying incomplete. But the referee is not. Reggie was there defending against Chris Jones, number 85. And it's a first down for Miami. That is one thing, Sonny, they didn't want Miami doing was getting into the inside. Well, you know, Costa does take a quick drop here. They have very fast receivers, so you got to test them out. You can't give them too much room to start off with. That was an excellent pass by Costa. Jones, who came into the ball game with 10 receptions, that was good for 14 yards. First and ten for the Hurricanes on the Husky 37-yard line. First of either team to get into the other's territory. And now the checkoff with two receivers left, one right. 
Here comes Stewart trying to get to the left side. Long opening. A lot of yardage and a first down as he gets inside the 30 down to about the 26 yard line. He was held. Uh, Lawyer Malloy makes the play defensively. He was held only 53 yards against ASU. Here's a good he free cost had checked off on this play prior to the snap. You can see Ink hitting on the inside. Good blocking at the point of attack on the outside and on the near side of the screen. And this big back doesn't need a lot of room, Don. Don't see a great deal of speed, but he sure got the strength and the size. That was good for 11 yards. He's ripped off a couple of good ones so far. First and 10 from the 26 on the opening drive for Miami. Three wide outs, all of them to the right. Stewart again, this time hoops around, now tries to get outside, finally can't get it. Brought down by Lamar Lyons, finds his way back to the line of scrimmage, but it took her just about all the Huskies to do it. We didn't see a speed on that last play, but on that play, you can see there. Elusiveness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a believer. <laughs> you knew it was there, it just didn't look on that first play. Deke Beavers, along with Russell Hairston. Finally, wrestle him down. Huskies are seeing by far their toughest opponent of the year. And most feel that this is by far Washington, or rather, Miami's toughest opponent in the early stages of 1994. Second down, 11 to go on the 27. Brings two to the left side. I thought he moved early. Costa with a lot of time. Reaching over. Was Green reaching over Reggie Reeser? Number 87 was Yatiel Green. Lawyer Malloy makes the tackle. Oh, what a play. Showed some leaping ability in this play. One on one. Here's Reggie. He's got good technique. Well, kind of holding up there. There could have been a flag on that play easily, Don. Out of position. Boy, nice extension. That's the way you coach it. Green with the reception. That is his first of the year. Coming into this game, just a redshirt freshman. Third down and three. Big play for the dogs on this opening drive. Harris goes in motion. Costa, Costa middle, complete to Harris, all the way down to a first and goal at the two yard line. Lamar Lyons makes the tackle at the two. His second reception of the year. That's Jonathan Harris, good for 16 yards. Goes in motion, comes back. There's a play right here, Don. We're just playing a zone on the defensive backfield, and they just split it right there, wide open. Jonathan Harris is a senior, really not a ball carrier. They give those duties to Mr. Stewart. Now they go with the eye. James Stewart still in the tailback position. Is Lawyer Malloy as he comes in in a hurry <laughs> and absolutely tattoos the fullback. Perfect timing on that play. Number 34, Derek Harris, as Malloy was in there about as quickly as the snap. Here's a good look. Good timing, perfect timing. Harris in there primarily for his blocking. He didn't hardly got out of his stance and get the ball before he's nailed. Second and goal, they'll call it from the five yard line. Loss of about three yards, thanks to Lawyer. Now they go back to a normal spread offense. In fact, the shotgun. Two wideouts left, two right, with the running back back with him, Stewart. And he goes to Stewart. Tough pass. He is strong. Did you see that? Oh, Lamar Lyons bounced off him like a brick wall. <laughs> wow. Those are some big thighs down there, Don. He is an impressive football player. Here it is, right there. It's just his release pass and right flat. Look at the catch. The nice hands. Whoa. That's Lamar Lyons. That's one of the best tacklers on this team. Good gang tackling by the Huskies, but big third down play coming up here. Third, third three. goal. Third and goal from the three. And now clock is stopped for a moment. Sun's coming back out. Huskies hoping for that sun to go down as quickly <laughs> as possible. Frank Costa had a career high 295 yards against Arizona State two weeks ago. Miami, of course, having a bye as well as the Huskies. Third and goal from the three. 
Two receivers right, one left, with Stewart in the backfield. Looking right all the way into the corner and throws it away. Looking for Jones, so it'll be fourth down. Nobody was open on that play, and that's a great boost for our defense. I think for our whole team, Don, if we can hold it to a field goal after that drive. Especially with all the adrenaline flowing in the first drive, as you know, the players go through, and Dennis Erickson will talk it over with Costa. So coming in to kick will be Dane Pruitt as Jim Lambright's defense is able to hold on. Pruitt's longest kick ever is 48 yards. This one will be exactly 20 yards. And it is good. So Pruitt comes up with a 20 yard field goal. In fact, they make it officially 19 yards, and we'll be right back after this. Three zip, Miami. A 20 yard field goal by Dane Pruitt, his first of the year. He's now one of two for the season here in the early stages. As a 53 yard drive was put together by Miami opening the game. Sonny, what do you think? I think that was a great move by our defense. They came up with a big play. Lawyer Malloy coming through and getting a big hit in that big fullback. And yeah, that was Save really, you're right, that was the key. Pruitt's kick this time much shorter and more fitting of his reputation. Sheehy from the 15. Brought down to the 21 yard line. Man doing it, number 25, Dennis Scott, who started at cornerback. Seven yard return. Also, there was C.J. Richardson, who uh, caused two fumbles last week and recovered one of them himself. So he got the defensive player of the week. Hey, guys, make sure you're out there. He did indeed in the Big East. Special teams, two recoveries against ASU. That's what killed the Sun Devils. Those two straight fumbles on kickoff return. You can certainly see team speed on that kickoff coverage. They're an excellent on all coverage teams. Like a bunch of gnats going after the bacon. <laughs> That's it. Wow. First and ten from the 21 as Janowski goes in motion. Jordan is wide to the right. With the leg for Compton. Swarming defense not giving him a chance. Really keying on him. Then closing in first was James Burgess, number 54, the sophomore out of Homestead, Florida. One of the most badly damaged cities here in, during the hurricane. That's an example right there, what they're trying to do defensively for the Hurricanes. Force the action, clog up the middle with the DBs, and you can see it right there. There's no place to run between the tackles. Has to go outside, team speed, linebacker speed, particularly by James Burgess, nailed Napoleon. Call it a loss of one. Second down and 11 as Thomas goes in motion, the fullback. Straight dive, cuts it up. Much better game this time up to the 26 yard line. Showed some good speed that time as Kenny Holmes, the defensive end, made the tackle. And his numbers coming into this contest. Holmes at only 240 pounds, not that big of a defensive end, Sonny. Well, a lot of their players are not really heavy. Uh, just the two inside guys, Riley and Sapp, have the big weight on them. But the linebackers are all 220 and under, mainly about 215. Napoleon going against speed. It's a matchup of speed against even greater speed. Third and five. Huskies need a first down to stay on the field. And they got it. Pass complete to Mark Bruner, stopped by Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker. Lewis, the first true freshman to ever start at Miami during the Dennis Erickson regime. Did so last year. There's a guy we need to go to today, Mark Bruner. So far, eight receptions. That's the guy that's going to be a key for us. And the key thing also is having Damon Heward comfortable throwing ball with confidence. And those are the kind of passes you need to complete. Jim Lambright giving him a rhythm pattern that time. Two three step drop and get rid of the ball. First and ten. Huskies with their first first down. They show blitz with Burgess. Flag goes down. Going across the middle looking for Bruner who had a host of orange people on him. I tell you what Damon better not be throwing too many of those passes today because he got nervous feet back there. Let it fly. Maybe he knew there was a penalty and go for broke. What do you got to lose. But if they don't call it on the defense you're in trouble. Might have been Burgess. He was uh, getting off the coast of the line, showing blitz. 
number 54 as Dennis Erickson winning his coach in the last five years of Division Offsides. 1A. Offsides. Defense. Football, still first down. Football. So that'll move it up now to first and five as the Huskies are trying to get it out of their own territory for the first time. Last week they had, or so far this year they have it, or excuse me, against ASU they had 18 penalties in that ball game. Washington has to play error-free football. First and five, they go to Kaufman. Keeps the feet moving. Gets maybe a couple to the 38-yard line. A host of hurricanes in there to meet him. Collins Sapp and Lewis, the middle linebacker. Sapp, the youngest of six children. His brother here in Texas, New Parnell, is running uh, running back at Lamar was his brother. And Sapp continues the tradition. He'll probably be the number one defensive lineman going out next year in the NFL if he goes early. Most say he probably will. He's got that kind of talent. Second down and four, gain of only one. But again, pitch back. Here we go. Trying to find a receiver. Goes way deep. Janowski's got to fight for it. Incomplete as Janowski and Bjornsson run into each other. But Miami was not fooled at all. Bjornsson, with a lot of time, however, C.J. Richardson defending primarily along with Dennis Scott. Nice idea, but with that kind of speed, well, here's a good look at it right here. You know they're going to jump inside looking for Napoleon. Caught him coming in there, Tuan Russell on the right side. He actually was going left to Bjornsson. Bjornsson was covered by two people and decided to throw it to the right to Janowski, who also was covered, hoping for a big play. Almost came up with it. <laughs> kind of a wobbly pass, too, for Damon. I'm just wondering if the humidity is going to affect their hands today, too, something they're not used to. Third down and four. And somehow Bruner comes Great. up with it for a first down. Oh, what a catch at the 45. That's why he's an All-American. Malcolm Pearson defending. <laughs> I tell you what, that, there was three guys draped over Mark Bruner. And first of all, Damon had to narrow that, I mean, zero in right on his numbers to get that pass there. That was on a frozen rope. First down for the Huskies, first and 10. Ball is on the 46-yard line of Washington. It's their second series today. Now what? As Sapp points to the Huskies. Patrick Kessie getting the most of Sapp so far. The guard, strong side guard. Aha! So Kessie won that battle. And there is another penalty on Miami. That's two offside penalties on Dennis Illegal Erickson's contact team. on the defense, still first down. So that makes it first and five again. And Jim Lambright doing what they need to do, move the chains. <laughs> Just keep moving them. Keep Costa and the rest of his gang off the field. James Stewart, Jones is wide receiver. <laughs> First and five, they are now in Miami territory. Play action. Looking for the tight end, Ernie Conwell. And Pearson was all over it. Number 38, well defended. Looking to Ernie Conwell, the tight end. Pearson, a senior, along with Chad Wilson and C.J. Richardson, all the seniors. Second down. Interesting that. Lambeau's offense is also going against Dennis Scott at cornerback. He is a true freshman. And Damon so far. But it's early. 6-11 remaining here in the first quarter. And the sun has gone behind the clouds for a while. That can only help. Second and five. Fumble. Down goes Kaufman. That's what you cannot do against Miami. Looked like there was a string on the ball. Looked like the Harlem Globetrotters for a second. Let's see what happens. He just lost. Well, actually, what he did is he hit it off the tail of Richard Thomas. Went right off the backside of Richard. You know what happens on that, Don? Sometimes the fullback takes the wrong path to where he has to be, or the quarterback takes the wrong right step to get the toss right. off. Exactly. Big challenge now. Third down and 15.
Janowski was open and it might have been a first down had there been a uh, completion. There's another there's another one of those if he had another arm he's always about an arm short of getting completion of Janowski. Janowski coming into this game with only one reception after 16 yards. Prince back in. And he needs to keep it away from that man, number seven, Jamie German. German, a newcomer, only a sophomore here. There's a good one. High, deep spiral, sending German all the way back to his 10. Trying to get to the outside, has some room. He got a flag down, however, as he's hauled down at the 19 yard line. And we'll see what the flag is. He looked to be holding on the near side on Ernie Conwell. Two guys were trying to tackle him. 50 yard punt and a 12 yard by return Arnold. by German. So maybe Prince has found the sweet spot on his foot again. And there's the call. Again, we have Big East officials today. And John Safi is the referee as Lambo says, yeah, we'll take it. Not a tough decision. Looks mean, doesn't he, with those sunglasses? He's got his game face on, that's yeah, for does. sure. They said he hadn't smiled all day today, that he was ready. <laughs> all the fans who know him knew, and there are the cool zones that are set up for the Huskies to stay cool. Can we get one of those? Yeah. Hey, football <laughs> fans. Super Bowl and We are high atop the Orange Bowl, as high on top of the press box as you can be. Oh, in fact, you even get to see that's us. There Here we is. are, gang, and if you pull out, you will see how high we are and why we are using the television <laughs> picture a great deal of the time. All the way down. And it's just as hot up here as it is down there. Sonny and I went out golfing at uh, Doral yesterday. Got to retrace some history, the great blue monster. Sonny brought that course to its knees. I buried the monster. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I did. If anybody back home wants to believe that. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so it'll be Miami ball. There you go. Another picture of the way the Huskies have chosen to stay cool down there. They didn't use those at SC. They had the opportunity to. Chose to just go with fans. But down here, it's a little different. 86, yeah, maybe that's not all that hot, but if you've ever been in 70% or 75% humidity with that temperature, it's unbelievable. Thunder and lightning storms yesterday. The team got their practice in here at the Orange Bowl prior to all the uh, the excitement with the weather, thunderstorms and lightning. Of course, Sonny and I were out of the golf course. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we were having fun. <laughs> Well, here's that great song again, Don. We will rock you. It's the it's first time it's ever been played. <laughs> Five thirteen remaining in the first quarter. And folks, if you haven't figured it out by now, you know uh, I will tell you it's another one of those famous ABC breaks. Huskies down three to nothing on the opening drive by Miami. They went 53 yards, stalled. At third and goal and ended up with a 19 yard field goal. So they have Miami with three receivers to the right side. Stewart in the backfield. First and 10 from the nine yard line. Stewart trying to go outside. Donovan Smith had to wrestle him down. It'll be a loss of at least four or five yards by the Huskies. As they try to go outside with Stewart. Ink Aliaga and Donovan Smith getting his first start of 94 with the play. Great job. Good seeing Donovan Schmidt back on the football field. There's an example why we need him out there. Tremendous job by Mikey Oliko on the down left defensive tackle spot. Give Donovan a chance to uh, get across the line of scrimmage and get that big back for a loss. Donovan, one of the captains of this team, has bounced back miraculously years ago when he was in that assault. In Palm Springs, stabbed in the leg. He has come back, turned his life around, and is a major part of this Husky team. Second down and 14 for the Hurricanes. Again, they go to Stewart. More room this time. Good job by Reggie Reeser and company to meet him. Donovan Smith coming all the way across the field to join Reggie. Gain of up to the 13 yard line. So give him about eight yards. What'd you think?
you think of the turf here, Sonny, when you went down? I think it's in great shape. It's uh, cut short. Uh, you can cut on it. It's a it's a fast track. I'll put it that way. It's really meant for these guys with speed. It's ideal. Third down and call it seven, six officially. Let's look for a little under route. They like to run a little underneath screens. From the shotgun, here comes Reggie Reeser. Was able to put enough heat on it so that the ball went well over the head of the receiver. That's one of the keys coming in the game we're looking for. You put pressure. Frank Costa will not be that accurate if he's got pressure on him during the day, and that was a great job. Huskies beginning to maybe figure a few, few things out. They sent the corner coming. Watch number four. Excellent spot right here. Here he goes, bearing down. Frank doesn't have a chance at this point. Great job by Rezzi. Just enough to ruin the delivery. So now it'll be Mike Chrissy back to punt, and he's not that deep or long a punter. I was just going to say that the snapper here, the long snapper, last week sent two over the head of the punter. Position as they will get the ball back for a third time today. They trail three to nothing as everybody's trying to cool down after that 38 yard punt. Thomas trying to get his licks in there as well, the fullback. In fact, the man Napoleon Coffin says he most admires is the fullback number 30, Richard Thomas. For a number of wonderful reasons. We'll get to that later today. Third down and two. Coffin can't do it. So it will be fourth and about one. Kenny Holmes along with Warren Sapp were in there leading the charge. I'm already thinking ahead. Do you go for it or not? No, they will not. You know, sometimes, Don, you, you gamble. Do we go at the strength of their team? If it's Warren Sapp, do we go straight at him? Do we, you know, take the ball game to him? So far, I think we got to try the other side of the line of scrimmage. <laughs> German waiting for Prince's punt, the last one of 50 yarder. Another chance to get him in deep. Left corner. Perry's down there trying to make sure it doesn't get into the end zone. It does not. In fact, it's back at the 12-yard line. Not that bad a job by Prince. 30-yard boot, but he puts Miami again back behind their own 15 to the 12. So Dennis Erickson without very good field position, a second consecutive series. Big crowd today, about 65,000, a little more than what is, we're told, normal. Only time they sell out the Orange Bowl, which holds about 74, is when either Notre Dame or Florida State comes to town, and the Seminoles will be here in a couple of weeks. First and 10 from the 12 yard line. 74 5 is the actual seating arrangement here for football. Hmm. Trying to go outside. They've got a new 
ball carrier. Ball knocked loose, but not until Larry Jones, listed third in the depth charts at fullback, brings it out of trouble, and they mark it up beyond the 25 in the first down for the Hurricane. David Kilpatrick along with Russell Hairston on the tackle. Top of the screen, you see Richie Chambers, 32. Let's go with the... Here we go. Now we go. He let himself be taken. He's got to maintain the outside containment, Don, and there's no way. I mean, once That's you get to the corner, there's nobody there to tackle you. Larry Jones coming in at 11 carry for 66 yards. First and 10 from the 25. Top to looking left, now right. Putting the pressure over the top, not until he gets the pass away. As he goes to the tight end, Gerard Daphnis, his first reception of the year. David Kilpatrick makes the stop. Not until Miami picks up another first. They do not go to the tight end very often. It's like kind of unusual to see him go to him this early in the ball game. It's all the fourth time all year. Yeah. Two and a half games. I'll tell you what, though, Frank Costa remember that pass because Steve Hoffman absolutely took him out. Here's a good look at it. And I love that. I love when Steve Hoffman hits people. Here it is. He'll remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> he got it away, is right. First and ten, however, for the Hurricanes from their own 40. Jones again. It's almost another 10 yards as Big Larry rambles. Lawyer Malloy knocks him OB at the 50 yard line. Change of pace between him and Stewart. There's the hit again. Good job, Steve. Way to get to him. Keep doing that all day. It'll pay its price. There he is. <laughs> Frank Costa shaking that head. So for Miami, as you see the big tall Steve Hoffman. Been a bad time by the skinny legs and his knees down. The boy's got a neck the size of most people's waist. He's got that intensity of his uh, high school coach and old teammate of mine, Dan Miller. Second and one, just short, is Jones for the first down. And they want to go deep. It's a foot race. Green and Reese. No. Green had a step on him. Had a couple of steps on him. And that is the one thing that Jim Lambright said we cannot afford to do, and that is give up the big play. Cannot give up the big play, but here we go, right here. Foot race. Oh, is he fast? He's the one I believe is clocked in about 4.3 seconds. Frank Costa threw that ball 55 yards. So much for a lack of arm strength. Five of eight so far. He came into the game with two interceptions, both at Arizona State last week. He was also sacked four times by the Sun Devils. So it's third down and one from the 50. Jones is in the backfield, as you see Chris Jones, a wide receiver. There are seven Joneses on this Miami team. They give it to the running back, Jones, who has the first down. Lawyer Malloy, along with John Fiala getting some play in there behind Ink Aliaga. John with an incredible game against Ohio State in Seattle two weeks ago. Larry Jones is a senior out of Gainesville, Florida. Averaging over six yards per carry. As the cool zone continues to do its thing. First attempt for Miami on the 47 of Washington. Into the last minute here of the first quarter. Two wideouts to the right and one to the left. Play action. Here comes pressure. Got to get out of the pocket. Goes across the middle. And interception, or rather interference, as Jones makes the catch. Chris Jones, who is injured on the play. Reggie Reeser was defending. And there was a collision before the reception. Yeah, he definitely it looked like he landed on top of the football after he made the catch. Reggie was all over him. I think it was a legitimate call. You can see the rush coming up right here. We got Dave Kilpatrick trying to shoot the gap on the left side. Good job of stepping up in the pocket and delivering the football on the money. Great catch. It appeared that he did not land on the ball. Might be a shoulder when he went down, hit the ground. Looks like he's holding that left shoulder there. Yeah, or hand or arm, something to the left side. You're right. For the offensive line, big Bob Sapp out of Colorado. So that moves the ball all the way down to the Washington 22-yard line. 
First and ten. Wide outs to the right side. Brent Jones is one of them. Number six wearing the new number instead of number 30. Jones trying to get outside. Can't do it. Fiala and Lawyer Malloy were there. Huskies did a nice job of getting in and stirring things up before that play was able to develop. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. Sonny? Well, I was just going to say they did a great job of holding their lanes, doing the technique that they didn't have to do to stay in their lanes and prevent the, the running back to get outside. First quarter is over. Huskies staying tight with the Canes on only a three to nothing lead after the first. On the floor of the Orange Bowl, I'm Don Poyer along with Sonny Sixkiller. We start the second quarter, three to nothing Miami. It is second and ten from the Husky 22 yard line. Hurricanes threatening, trying to set up the screen, and they've got to ditch it because Steve Hoffman was right in the middle of things, Sonny. Did a nice job of getting in the way as you see the numbers from the first 15 minutes. 123 total yards for Miami, but only three points to show for it, and the Huskies at 15 yards. No turnovers. That's important for the Huskies, certainly. Well, that's a very big key, and there's a very big play on that last, uh, on the second down here. Uh, Justin Thomas, number five, prevented Freak Costa from getting the ball into the left oh, right. Oh, no. Third down and 10 from the 22 yard line. Trips to the right side. Huskies trying to disguise their defense as much as they can. Oh, no. They send people. They skin to that inside. That's the inside screen that worked so well against Arizona State. And they pass it this time to Yatiel Green. But David Kilpatrick and Mikey Waliko are there to lead the charge. Chris Jones has a bruised left shoulder. He is expected to return, however. That is number 85, the wide receiver for Miami. So trying a 39-yard field goal is Dane Pruitt. We mentioned earlier his career long is 48. Well within his range from the right hash mark. They call it officially 38. And it is good. So it's been all Dane Pruitt so far with a 20 and a 30-yard field goal. Making it six to nothing as we just get underway here in the second quarter. We'll return to the Orange Bowl here in just a moment. get into the second quarter 1407 remaining and you see the Husky cheerleaders have arrived Napoleon Kaufman needing 78 yards to become the all time leading rusher for the Washington Huskies so far six carries 15 yards. So he needs another uh, quick help me 60 yards 63 yards 53. <laughs> I can't remember 63 sounds good. Thank you. Up man Mike Reed the fullback gets the carry and brings it all the way up to the 34 yard line. I'll tell you Pruitt does not kick it deep very often other than the one time we saw to begin the game 15 yard return. The drive itself went a long way 66 yards didn't eat up a whole lot of time. But again Pruitt coming out the Hurricanes having to settle for a field goal this time from 39 yards. I couldn't tell if that was a planned kick or not. I can't tell if he missed it or if uh, he planned on squibbing it short. First and ten for Washington. Only about 15 yards total offense so far. Hoffman to try to go to the outside. Ray Lewis sees it all the way and brings him down for a loss. A well devised game plan so far for Kaufman. Here's a good shot of it. Ray Lewis, number 52. You can see the offensive lineman as soon as the play, they're just reach blocking to the left. Oh. You know, it's a little tough to do that with the speed of those linebackers without a fullback in there knocking them down. Yeah. Absolutely. So, a loss of two. 
Back to 13, check it 14 yards for Kaufman so far. Fred Lewis. Excuse me, Fred Coleman coming out as a wide receiver. As Hewitt's going to throw. Nearly picked up. Earl Little, a backup free safety. Just a sophomore out of North Miami. Not even close. There are two guys on Eric Bjornsson out there in the right flat. Fred Coleman came into the ballgame, number 22, who is a redshirt freshman as a wide receiver for Ewart. Came out to the left side. That's the first of the. Uh, hasn't had a lot of action so far. Wouldn't mind getting him the ball, though that kid can fly. He has the kind of speed that you can compete. Third down and 12. Huskies really struggling on offense, and they have just got to stay on the field a little longer. Here come the linebackers to lay it off the cop. He's got 13 yards to go. He is going to come close. Gets it up to about the 38 yard line. And the Husky offense really being clamped down as Chad Wilson made the tackle. There is a player down. Here's, here's Hewitt after the throw. Lobbered by a host of folks for including Pat Riley, number 43. I uh, know after the sack, though, after the hit, I should say, Kenny Holmes gets up and waves his towel around and taunts people, and uh, there's no need for that. Different styles, eh, Sonny? A little different down here in the South Lane. Still unable to identify the injured player. Maybe one of the linebackers. It looked like 43, say. Patrick Riley. That would be Pat Riley, the big man up front. He's the one that laid the licking on Damon Hewitt that last play. Dennis Erickson relying on him along with Sapp, as we said, as the two big people inside. In fact, Riley, that is Pat, was the only true freshman to play on the 91 national title team. Came in along with us, he's his co champion. He'll be okay. It's tough hitting those Washington quarterbacks. <laughs> they are tough. They want to pick on those QBs. So Jeff Prince, Number 47, who has done Jeff a good job Prince. today punting for the Washington Huskies, who will be back on his own 20 for this kick as Riley is Jamie still trying Turner to figure out what day it is. Here's Prince. He'll pick it up and try to run with it. Gets past the initial wave, still alive. A lot of running, but only gets about five yards <laughs> as he's up to the 34 yard line. He's nifty, though. Well, isn't he's he, got Sonny? some quick feet. 11 yards return total after the 38 yard punt. Jamie German was electrifying against the Sun Devils. Had a 56 yard pass connection and another one for about 50. And we'll be back right after this. Along with Sonny Six Killer, I'm Don Poyer. We are looking at first and ten from the 35-yard line after the 38-yard punt by Prince of Washington. Busted play as Cox has got to try to find something and still comes up with six yards. Play designed to go the other way, so there weren't many Huskies around. Not bad for improvising. Lawyer Malloy came over along with Ink Aliaga for the tackle. 12-15 remaining here in the second quarter. Well, the cloud cover remains, but it is still extremely muggy. And everybody here that lives in Miami has said that this is more like July weather rather than September. We've got a lot of new faces on defense in there. Jerry Jensen, number 40. Torak. George Wayne, yes, a lot of fresh people. Stewart gets the first down. Alonzo Highsmith, alum of Miami, said that this Stewart guy, he is the next big name in terms of great running backs to come out of the Hurricane program. Richie Chambers will agree with that right now after making that tackle. 
Six carries so far, but Larry Jones has come in on a couple of occasions for 10 yard spurts. First and 10 now for Miami. Time of possession way to the side of the folks at Orange and Green. But only a six point lead, six zip. From the 46, two receivers right, one to the left side. Costa, a little bit of pressure, now goes out to the sideline. Oh. Incomplete. Intended for number 87, Yatil Green. Green was wide open. It's a good pass. It's been a great completion. Costa's showing me more than I expected, Sonny. How about you? Well, he's been pretty good back there in the pocket. He's eluded a couple hands trying to grab him for a loss back there. He, on the previous uh, two plays ago, he scrambles for six yards. Once a defensive coordinator, always a defensive coordinator. Yeah, Jim's <laughs> got that game face on, boy. Yeah. He's serious. A little different from Ohio State when it was all going Washington's way. Second down and 10 from the 46. Defense has played well, however, only giving up two field goals. Still a big hole right up the middle. First down all the way to the 34 yard line of Washington. Stewart is a one man wrecking crew. Lamar Lyons and Lawyer Malloy make the tackle. 19 yard run. Here's a great look at it. You don't want your DBs making too many tackles during the ball game. Here's a good shot at the linebacker shooting a gap. Good blocking. Wow. Excellent blocking on the line of scrimmage. Mikey Willico didn't know which way to go. Yeah, and Aliaga is shot the other way. So they caught him at the right time. First to 10 from the 35 of Washington. Defense shifting, one man to the left. And a timeout called by Costa. Maybe it was the shift. Who knows? Let's take a time out of our own here at the OB, the Orange Bowl, back after this. Napoleon Kaufman and the Washington Huskies are simply not moving the ball on the ground. 71 zip. With, uh, that's uh, a first quarter and five minutes of the second quarter. And it's going to be hard to move the chains without a rush game. As they trail six to nothing, it could get real ugly in the second half if somehow they don't turn things around. A defense can't be out there that long. Harris goes in motion now on first and ten from the 35 for Miami. Flag goes down. Lamar Lyons almost had the pick against Jonathan Harris, number three. But let's see what the flag's all about. Huskies get in too soon? We don't know. Neither does Jim. Illegal motion. Another penalty against Dennis Erickson's crew. Dennis. We, excuse me, Don. We need those. Uh, so far, our defense needs a break of some sort. If we can get them committing penalties, it'll buy us a little time. Dennis and Jim Lambright and Pinky Erickson, Dennis's father, all visiting on the practice field yesterday or here at the Orange Bowl practicing. Kind of fun to reminisce a little bit. Dennis said, Papers down here are really on his case. Hey, uh, down here, you either win a national title or you're a failure. It's that simple. <laughs> I know. That's, pressure. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Talking with some Miami folks at a reception last night. Same thing. Fans just expect them to be playing on uh, either in the Orange Bowl or somewhere on New Year's Day for a national title. Last time Jim was here in the Orange Bowl, you remember 1985 as the Huskies defeated Oklahoma to win the Orange Bowl. First down and 15 after the motion penalty against Miami. Pass to the pass. Down he goes. Bumble. Let's see. Washington yeah. ball. There's the takeaway they needed. Boy, that'll set some <laughs> juices of flowing over there. Boy, they we needed that big time. That'll get the adrenaline flowing. Looks like it was Richie Chambers all the way. Jason Chorak came up with a fumble. And the red shirt freshman, Jason Chorak. Here it is again. Frank Costa didn't know what was going to be happening to him. Richie Chambers, boy, you can just see that. The ball's out right there. Great job. And for Richie Chambers, that is sack number five and a half. He has 5.5 so far. First turnover of the game. 
Huskies need to move the sticks. Bjornsson left. And Janowski to the right. Hoffman slices, gets maybe three yards. Ernie Conwell. <laughs> Talking it over a little bit with Kennard Lang, the defensive tackle. He couldn't see it from what you're watching here, but they were throwing four arms a little bit. Twan Russell, the fastest linebacker on this Hurricane team with a stop. He runs a 4-5-40 at 6-2, 206. Second down and eight after the gain of two. Same formation. Tight end Bruner. Very close to the first down. Let's see where they mark it. It's right at the marker. As C.J. Richardson, the free safety, was there defensively. That's what we need to do again in the first quarter. Nice short passing game. Get those linebackers out of there, think and pass, and then we can be able to run the football up the middle. Up the middle. First down for the Huskies. Runner getting that size 12 up there, and he'll give me a bad time now if he's a size 11. But he got it up there far enough to get the first. Press lunch and last Monday I threatened to steal his pizza. Then he stood up and I gave it back to him immediately. <laughs> First and ten from the Hurricane 38. The pitch to Kaufman. Not a lot, but still gets down to the 35. Gain of about three. Kennard Lang, the defensive end on the right side there, along with Richardson, the safety. 9.44 remaining in the first half. General consensus in the press box today was if the Huskies can stay close in the first half, they've got a shot. There's Mark Bruner, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis can't get rid of him. <laughs> hey, if I can't get rid of him, I'll just tackle him with me. Take him down. Second down and seven. Good play action. Again, trying to go to the tight end, this time Ernie Conwell. And maybe I looked at it late, but Bjornsson looked awfully open to me, deep. Juan Russell defending. Well, there are two people on him, and that's a very tough pass to complete. You have to be right, right on. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No. Huskies look at another third and long. Third down and seven. The 35, no, they're not at the field goal range as of yet. Well, this is a big play here in the second quarter. Bjornsson left, Janoski right. Straight drop back. Bruner very close to the first. Oh, down. what an effort by Mark Bruner. Bruner's <laughs> having a career day for grabs. Blocking and grabs for that matter, and he got it against his old buddy Ray Lewis, the man he T-boned just a minute ago blocking. <laughs> oh, boy. Peterson blocking against Kennard Lang. Andrew's doing an excellent job this year, and there's another example of his blocking ability. But the key play was Mark Bruner with a great grab and extending himself to get the first down. At least I believe he got the first They're going to measure. If it is, it's by no more than the nose of the football. Didn't get the greatest mark in the world. Got yes. it. Well, that's what we said, the nose. Mark Bruner. <laughs> He is playing extremely well. His parents made the trip down. Some of his other relatives, for that matter. <laughs> There's a look of a tight end. Shoulder pads showing, stomach out. I mean, well, excuse me, not much of a stomach, but at least his skin is showing. <laughs> Coach McMacken, the defensive coordinator for Miami. And Mark Bruner, captain of this team, along with number eight right next to him. Four catches for Bruner today. First and ten from the 28th. The noise going up. Jeez. Can't do that, folks. Just like SC, you cannot do that. It's hard to say who's at fault. I know Lambo is not real happy with that. See the anguish in his face on that one. Big first down on the opposition side there, 30. You cannot make those little mistakes. Well, that's a senior and a junior. Those things just cannot happen. And they know it. We don't need to say it up here, but. It is a fact. So a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12. Block is not a factor so far in the second quarter. 8 10, 8 9. I formation this time. Down he goes. Pat Riley with the sack.
Can't make mistakes because it, the opposition can often feed on those. And here comes the sack. Pat Riley, 43, has great speed for a down lineman. Damon didn't have much of a chance on that play. Another critical third down, and it is a long one. They've got to get down to the 18-yard line. It is third and 17. Two wide outs. They send everybody. Trying to set up the screen. Yes. They go to Thomas. He's got room. 30, 25. First down. He's down. Backfield that made a great block. Look at number eight on the right side of your screen. Napoleon, here comes a big rush, Ray Lewis. That was a tremendous block as they actually key to making this play successful. Good job by Damon. And they caught Miami in a blitz. Everybody was coming with a perfect time to run a screen. When they're an attacking defense like Miami is using their speed, that was a great play against that type of defense. That's a career long play for Richard Thomas, by the way. First and goal. The ball on the eight yard line. Miami has not given up a touchdown this year. Intercepted. Heward is hurt. Damon took a shot. Shook hands with Ernie Conwell. That may have been his intended receiver. Juan Russell, number 45, to the right of your screen. Here he comes. Unfortunate. You know, it's, I'm not sure if Ernie was open to begin with, but if you can feel that pressure that close, bite the ball, put it away. Yes. Ray Lewis, the man with the interception, the middle linebacker. And Ernie indeed was the intended receiver, Ernie Conwell. All right, let's see how the Huskies respond. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. Stewart, we got another flag. That one hurt. That they one sent, hurt big time. Sent their fastest linebacker, Quan Russell. Another penalty on Miami. We're up to about four or five, I believe. And that'll bounce him back to half the distance to the goal or five yards. And Lambright says, yes, definitely. Back him up. Make it first and 15. Ball goes back to just outside the six yard line. With six and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Great play by the linebacker Twan Russell hitting York, or rather uh, Damon Hewitt, just as he was passing, and Ray Lewis came up with the ball. First and 15 for Miami. Three wideouts, two left, and one to the bottom of your screen. Great and job. Everybody is there to meet Mr. Stewart, including Justin Thomas, number five, who had started the last couple of games. Playing tough D where they have to play tough D, and it's nice to keep the pin back here. Anything can happen when you're inside your own five yard line. I was going to say, strange things can happen. Way to take on the blocker and make the tackle. Absolutely, Justin Thomas. Great job. And Kaliaga playing off the block well, too. Justin getting the chance to play a little bit for Donald Smith, who had the start. And is getting a well deserved rest. Nice to have linebackers with experience to come in. Three wideouts to the right side on second and 18. Stewart again, nothing. They didn't exactly rip him down, but <laughs> they got his feet anyway. For a moment, I thought he was going to break it. He got a couple, so did I. Mike Iwaligo was the man holding on to his feet. Huskies with a great deal of speed on this defense. Last week, you know, we this is a big play for us. Third down, we've got 16 to go. Last week, Frank Costa from the shotgun formation threw an under route. It went for a long touchdown. 56 yards. So our linebackers better be ready here. 
And don't pull a Seahawks. Send everybody in a 99-yard touchdown. That's right. San Diego did. Three wideouts right, one to the left. There's the middle screen again. Oh. Can't do it. Jamie German, and he knows he had room. This time he tried to cut it outside with the Huskies waiting in the middle. Well, that guy's a real athlete. He almost broke that. He may have gotten the first down. I'm not sure if he's gone all the way, but it's a great athlete, athletic job. I tell yeah. you. Uh, referee who went down as well. He juked so bad he hurt the ref. I think he pulled him. He's all right. Big East crew. And the Miami trainer's coming out. Might have taken one of the job. I hope he's okay, but that's just a great job by our defense. They've been out there the whole first half, it seems like. They rose the occasion there. Did a great job. He's also the sponsor of the Athletic Student Trainers Award. Defense gaining more and more respect. By all means, nationally and in the Pac-10. And they're doing all this playing a lot of people on that right. side of the ball. That's got to make Lambo extremely happy. To hold the Miami Hurricanes to six points. And again, the first half isn't over. But to hold them this long. Remember, this is a team that used to score in 50. Well, they had 50 some points in their last game here against Georgia Southern, a 1 AA team. They had 47 on the road against Arizona State. They're not used to going without touchdowns for a first half. There's Ron Mar Marley, who is the son of the late Bob Marley, the singer. Last year, no do. This year, a wild do. Yeah. Welcome the sponsors of the <laughs> yeah, that's Steve Woodruff, our producer, looks like. But he's, well, you go road trip with him. You don't want to meet him for coffee downstairs till about noon. He doesn't use that band, though. Fourth down for Miami. Sonny, you want to send some people, or are you going to try to get a good return with Kaufman back there? I think we've got a capable returner now, Leon Neal. Is Leon out, out there? Leon he is. is there. Just come out, okay. You want to send some people, though? I don't think so. I'd rather get good field position. I think that we get, if this kid does not punt very far, and the average is 33 yards, let's get good field position. If we do get a return, who knows? This kid can do it. His longest punt, that being Mike Prissy, number 13, is only 36 yards this year. He did, however, average 39 plus in 1993. Hey, Don, I stand corrected. Leon Neal was out there to return the kick, and Napoleon is back there now. Well, Napoleon has, a, has the option, doesn't he? He can say, Leon, go out, I need rest, or go out himself. But we're still waiting. It's the referee's injury that's holding up the game. Huskies will be flying home immediately after the game. We figure we'll get home about 1, 2 o'clock Pacific time in the morning. And now we're ready to punt. As Chrissy is on his own goal line. No rush, very low, wobbly punt, probably by choice. Hoffman's going to give it a shot anyway up the middle. Ooh, gets tagged by C.J. Richardson, number 19. Oh, what a hit by Richardson after the five-yard return. And a good 45-yard punt by Chrissy. Good job of getting the Hurricanes out of trouble. The Huskies will have it all just outside their own 47-yard line. Here's the punt. It looks like he was meant to try to kick it low. Don't get the point. He's supposed to return it. Here he comes. Here comes CJ. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't as good a look as I thought it was. But no. I to hit him head on. But that, that just shows you the guy that got that most valuable player last week. First and ten. Fullback Richard Thomas gets maybe a couple. Just trying to get the defense. Keep the defense honest. Stopped by Baraka Short, number 50, a backup at the right defensive end. 422 remaining here in the second quarter in Miami. The first meeting between these two in the good old Orange Bowl, built back in 1937. Leon Neal stayed in a tailback. Second down and eight. Huskies be glad just to get into the locker room and regroup at six zip, I think. Hold on to the football here for the last four minutes. Let's go down and score. I'd rather really have a score. Nice. That'd be nice. That's going to be problems. Pat Riley in there a little early, number 43. We'll see if he was drawn or not. Quiet crowd here at Miami. 
You notice that, Sonny? Well, it's, you know, it's easy to be quiet. Off sides on the defense. <laughs> I think they're probably stunned. They're not used to their team just being ahead by six points. Another penalty on Miami. Here we go. They're up to at least six now. So it'll be second down and three. That's got to help Eward and company. Huskies had marched all the way down to a first and goal inside the 10. And Ewart got hit hard from the left side by Juan Russell. His pass intended for Ernie Conwell was deflected on the throw and the interception. So each team with a turnover. Second down and three. Richard Thomas fighting for the first down. I think it was short. So it'll be third and inches, maybe a yard as Short and uh, Warren Sapp are there. Richard Thomas, the man Napoleon says he most admires, he said because he's got his degree or could have his degree in just over three years, which is fantastic. He has a child. He is married. He is very proud of his wife and child. He's a very tough football player. I think he's the hardest hitter on the team. He says the overall package. I really, really admire Richard. Pretty nice thing said by Napoleon Kaufman, the Heisman candidate about 3 0. Camp Kissel, number 11, not playing at the additional wing position on uh, third and short. They only need one, they got a flag. And the flags went up at the snap. Not only that, I, don't, I really don't like seeing our running back have to go up to the fullback to figure out what the play was called. Yeah. That's going to go in Washington. So it'll be third down and six. The illegal procedure, so they should back it up. Saying his ultimate goal would be to win a Super Bowl. Not going to do it playing coach of college ball. You know, with the speed of this Miami defense, it might be a better choice for us to do a little shotgun action here with Danny Hewitt. Third down and six. That is man, Janowski. First down, Washington at the 38-yard line, 225, and the clock is stopped. Dave Janowski was overdue to catch a pass. Only his second all year. Carlos Jones, the right corner, was there to stop him. Janowski with a grab. That surprises me only the second grab, but the guy that runs such precise routes as him, you expect him to be open a little more. He had 14 receptions last year. He's an academic All-American candidate. And yes, we've said all along, Janowski's got to get in there and be more involved in this offense. First and 10 from the 37. Fred Coleman with his first catch as a Husky. Doesn't gain much, but he's got the butterflies out of his stomach now. First catch. We'll be right back. 2.04 remaining. First half. Inside the 30, needed to get down to the 27 yard line. A minute 23 remaining here in the first half. Clock still moving. Huskies with all three timeouts. Third and two. Here's a good look at it, right hand side. That's a, I love to see Damon do that. Pick up whatever yardage he can, slide in there, don't get hurt. Here he goes. I told him to run and he did it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I look, we've always said Sonny react as a quarterback during these broadcasts, and he was ready to run. Run it! <laughs> uh, I know. It's, maybe it's because it was my size. I don't know. <laughs> Timeout was called by Washington. A minute eight remaining in the ball game. All right, you've got third down and two, Sonny. You're just inside the plus 30 yard line. You need a couple of yards. Clock management, 108 left. I think it's very do. well. I think it's very important right now. Number one, let's get the first down, and let's don't do any play action passes or any kind of thing where we have to go in motion. Here's a job. Here's a shot of Damon again. 
Ray Lewis, that's a smart move because Ray Lewis will take your head off. He's a hitter, isn't he, though? He's big, too, at 6'1", 221. Well, anyway, yeah. get the first down. Yeah, that's what I say. Otherwise, you know, it's we don't really have the speed people to do a play-action pass to go deep on this play to surprise them. So let's have a play. Good, solid play. They get the first down. That's an even 50% right now. 8 of 16 for those 72 yards. The one pick was, again, deflected just as he was throwing it. John Wales, the kicker who we have not seen today, his longest in his very, very brief career for Washington is 44 yards against Ohio State two weeks ago. And there's absolutely no wind right now. When the game first started, there was a heavy breeze blowing right to left. What the direction he would be kicking right now, there is none. He tried two, one from 47, one from 49. Neither were good, but they were long enough, if I recall. And right now, you'd be looking at about a 46-yarder if he tried, should they not be able to get the touchdown. And it's cooling off. It is, it's not as hot. Well, Husky fans, don't miss the newest edition of Husky Profile this Wednesday at 5.30. Chuck Nelson and myself will be bringing you a preview of the men's and women's soccer season. We'll flash back to the legendary career of the guy standing to the right of me, Sonny Six Killer. And I go one-on-one -on -one with Napoleon Kaufman. That's in conversation. Husky <laughs> Profile, Wednesday, 5.30 on Prime. You were too slow to go one-on-one. -on -one. Third down and two. Coffin, no! Number 90, Kenny Holmes was there. Kaufman got through the first wave, but not the second. The wave was a wall. So they will attempt the field goal on fourth down. I don't know why we don't have a fullback leading up in the hole. I don't want to be too critical. But with the way the defense is zeroed in on Napoleon today, nice to have a block there. So that's going to mean 30, it'll be 47 yard attempt. And the time remaining. Haynes called the timeout, by the way, not the last one. It's the last two. So 47, that's within his range. No, I think the Miami called the timeout, but Frank Costa in the first quarter called a timeout, and they're going in towards the uh, near side. All right, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. They have one remaining. Kaufman now, 11 carries for 16 yards here in the first half. And that's tough to do. Tough to stay in the Heisman race when you've got 16 yards. He's had a couple of flashes. He had a seven-yarder. First quarter. Just looking for Kaufman's numbers. He had a seven yarder and a six yarder on his third carry. So his longest run of the day, only seven yards. You don't think Lambo would take this, would you? Why not? <laughs> you got Jordan is your holder. And we all know he played quarterback, but this is from 47. Long enough. Yeah, Huskies are on the board. 47-yard field goal by John Whale. And the Huskies are within three with less than a minute to go here in the first half. Eric Bjornsson, the holder, looked like he had a little rough job here, but he got it down to something. Oh, nice hand. Good job. Still spun it. Great job, Eric Bjornsson. Great extension on that kick. He knew it was good, too, when he hit it. John Wales is worth his weight in gold at 185 pounds. <laughs> and Jim Lambright knows as well as anybody. <laughs> He's only a sophomore, and we've told you the story about him following Jeff Jager down at Kent Meridian, the same high school as Jeff. John Wales is becoming a very popular Husky. Miami fans aren't used to this at all, being up by only three with no touchdowns in the first half at home. As Washington defense continues to gain respect and will do so, we're on most of the ABC affiliates in East Coast today. They've got that dangerous return crew back here. Al Shipman, yes. Jamie Green, Jamie German. Excuse me, Jamie German, my fault. There's something else. 
And I don't think they're going to try anything like they did against Ohio <laughs> no. State with the boot kick. No. <laughs> Boy, that was fun, though. That was one of the most exciting moments I've been around college football for a long time. One of the return guys, Al Shipman, Don, they say he has a 4 2 8 40 yard dash. Yeah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm not buying it. Booting it. Shipman. Up to the 20, is slowed down. Huskies close in, still going. Gotta make tackles, guys, and they finally do. His lawyer Malloy comes down to make the kill. 30 yard return by Shipman. Boy, he's something else. How many times has Lawyer Malloy made a big tackle for us this season? Now that's his job. He's doing a good job of it. No big plays here. 42 seconds. Our defense can't give up a big one. It's going at halftime 6 3. 42 seconds remaining, as you said. First and 10. Ball on the 31 and the goal to shotgun. And they'll try to maximize. We'll get it out to the right side. Reggie Reeser, nice play. Gain of only about three yards as Harris is able to get out of bounds. 34 ticks on the old clock remaining. Huskies have got to feel good going into the locker room if they're able to go in with that six to three deficit. Well, some other Northwest teams have been successful down here. Seattle Seahawks came down in the early 80s. Knocked off the Dolphins to go on to the AFC Championship game against the LA Raiders. Dave Craig, Kurt Warner. Second down. Gonna go deep. Looking for Green. Are they gonna call it? Now wait a minute. Boy, that's gonna be an arguable point for Washington if they call interference on the Huskies. You decide. Go ahead, step for step. Boy, that's a tough call. Well, yeah, if the feet get tied up, they're, they're going to call it probably against Lawyer. But we'll Fortunately, wait. it's only a yard penalty. You don't get the full right. distance. 15 yards. 27 seconds remaining. Miami with their offense, though. Pass interference the well. on the defense. The Automatic the first down. He was doing his best to stay out of the way. Well, staying with Yatil Green, 4 3 again. There's that 4 3 speed, but uh, he, he did a good job. He's right with him. They sent two wideouts to the right side. First and 10 from the 49 of Miami. And a wideout to the left. Got to get some heat on it. There it is. With a foot race. Oh! AC Tellison, the intended receiver. We're talk down here and we talk of our coaches. These guys do have the capability of making big plays. But in the first two games of the year, they've also dropped a lot of passes. That was one of the things Dennis Erickson was most upset about against Arizona State. Too many drop balls. AC, my gosh. Oh. Not even close. Oh, boy. That's Nobody. a big break for us, I'll tell you that. I don't even need to say it. <laughs> Gee. Mr. Costa, I got a feel for you because that was a perfectly laid pass. Second and ten. Gonna go deep again. He's wide open. Unbelievable. Why can't the Huskies play back? That is unbelievable, Don. 13 seconds to go in the half, and you let people get behind them. My gosh. 51 yard play. Russell Hairston is the man who let Green get away. Yateel Green with a reception. Especially after nearly getting burned on the other side of the previous play. Well, you know coming into the ball game that all these guys are all world-class printers. Just run back and let them come to you. You can't let them get behind you like this. Frank Costa, as we saw earlier in the game with a 55-yard pass, has the arm strength to get it anywhere he wants to. That's totally unbelievable. Miami using up their final timeout. <laughs> Yadiel Green, who had no receptions coming into this game, he was banged up. That's going to really 
See what's what's bad about this and you know this Sonny is now they go into the locker room down by probably 10 as opposed to three and they're also going to go for two. So it could be 11. 11. And in a tight game like this going for two could be critical. Absolutely cannot give up the big play. And that was against their veteran in, in uh, Russell Hairston. The senior back there. Screen, you see everybody floating back. He's got at least an eight yard cushion. The problem is, see that he let him get too close to him. He's got to be able to maintain that spread. Well, again, the speed of these wide receivers, you and I can see it from back here. They're coming at the Huskies so much more quickly than they are responding in terms of the deep routes. And again, Frank Costa threw the ball about 55 yards in the air. Unbelievable. Well, AC Tellison probably feels better. <laughs> the the previous pass. Yep. The field got him off the hook. So they will indeed go for two with two receivers left, two right. Shotgun for Costa. 12 3 is the score. Across the middle, Harris. It's good. Check it. It's Jamie German, number seven. Oh, that hurts going into the locker room. 14 to 3 psychologically, yeah. Looks like two touchdowns to a field goal. After doing such a great job defensively for the entire half, being on the field, they were on the field seem like 80% of the time to give up a play like that. We've always said it's always two halves. <laughs> and for what it's worth, it is cooling off there. It's not quite as overwhelming as it was at kickoff. Here, Eastern Time, it's coming up on 510. Frank's got a lot of time on this two pointer. See Jamie Green at the top of the screen on the left hand side. They love to run these routes and just utilize their speed. Once they get close to the DB, they break off, use their speed to get away from them. The ball's usually right there. Create separation, as they talk about. A little separation. There he is. You're beat already with that speed. That's the thing again they wanted to avoid. Not let Miami get behind him, son. He's not let Miami get in the middle. Here's the kick by Pruitt. Sean Sheehy from the five. And goes down at about the 19 yard line. Low kick left hand. Only eight seconds left on the clock here in the first half. Miami with no timeouts, by the way. Huskies with two. Probably a good point. Only eight seconds from there. Big. Go ahead, son. I was just going to say, let's put a knee down, get in there, get relaxed, regroup a little bit, forget that play, it's over with. Psychologically, so much tougher to go into that locker room down 14 3 instead of 6 3. We'll see how the dogs respond. They're going to throw. Oh, no, they can't give them another touchdown. One, no, clock ran out. Oh, my God. Miami's trying to get another. Second on the clock. It's halftime. It is indeed halftime. The clock ran out. Oh my God. And the crowd wants another second on the clock. I've got to admit, when I saw him run out of bounds and went up to the clock immediately, there was still a second on the clock. Boy, Dennis Erickson and their coaching staff are all over those officials. And the officials from the Big East getting the what for from better than 60,000 fans. We'll be back right at halftime.
here at halftime 14 to 3 one touchdown they go for two tie that into two field goals and you've got a 14 3 lead for the hurricane welcome back Don Poyer again with Sonny six killer tough one Sonny the 51 yard touchdown yeah that's clearly. that's that's real tough but you know there are two halves to every game yeah. so perhaps they can come back and do some good in the second half let's look at the numbers now for the first 30 minutes of the ball game rushing wise well total yards first of all 82 10 yards rushing to 59 and uh, you can see the numbers the two turnovers that late interception that was controversial there was time left on the clock as we went back and reviewed it time of possession surprisingly Washington with the ball more yeah that surprises me quite a bit but uh, you know obviously they're keying on Napoleon we just need to get him untracked and he can do a lot of things that we can give him some room Napoleon officially 15 yards in the first half so what will unfold in the next 30 minutes hey let's get to it and find out 14 3 is the score and it's still pretty warm. Kicking off here for the second half as the Hurricanes lead it 14 to 3 over the Washington Huskies. How will they respond? Let's find out. We shall see as Damon Hewards warming up there on the left side of your screen. He'll be coming in here right away just as they began the game with Washington getting the offensive unit on first. So here we go. Dane Pruitt out to kick. He had a 20 yarder and a 38 yarder in the first half. Hoffman. And it's all the way into the end zone, and that's where it will stay. So now Washington will begin first and 10 on their own 20 yard line. Huskies have had the chances, Sonny. Well, they haven't been totally out of this ball game, no. Don. You know, with a couple of breaks on that team. One interception, you know, we could have gotten three points or possibly a touchdown. And, of course, the big bomb before halftime, we could either be tied or ahead in this ball game. So the Huskies with Damon Hewitt at quarterback, Jim Lambright trying to bring the crew back as they trail by 11. Richard Thomas goes to set out to the right side, the fullback. On first down, Kaufman hesitates a moment, gets a good first down, five-yard play. As it'll be second down in five. Dennis Erickson, hot as the orange is orange in those jersey colors. Because when the interception was made by his man, the replay showed there was two seconds left on the clock to end the first half. Here's the There's Big play. Patrick 54 again. Out of nowhere is Marley flying from the left side. Did a good job though with Sal. Second down and five. Setting up the screen. Hoffman. One man to get away from. Can. Slices back. Still. Oh, oh yes. He's got lots of room now at the foot right now. It's Richard Thomas. Thomas to the 30. Go, to the go. 20. To the 10. He's going to score. Richard yes. Thomas, a 75 yard screen. What a way to start the second half. I thought it was Napoleon. He was moving so well. Richard Thomas, who had the other screen to get down to a first and goal situation in the first half, now goes 75 yards. The first touchdown allowed by Miami this year. Great job blocking out there on the outside. I am just so excited. Richard Thomas, great cutback, had the speed. Nobody was there. I don't know what happened to all the defensive backs on that play. But nobody was there to give. Great block out there. <laughs> Looked like Napoleon. It was. On Dennis Scott. I'm not so sure he needed to throw it. <laughs> you know something, though? It was Dennis Scott who was hopping around down here on the kickoff coverage. Uh, just a play <laughs> earlier. Two plays on the opening of the second half. Looks like we might be going for two. 75-yard play. Let's pick Going this. for two, you're right. Let's pick this up, and we're only three points away. Yardson on the right side, Janowski left. It is Leon Neal in the backfield, not Kaufman. Naked bootleg looking for the tight end. Janowski's got it! And it is all of a 
a sudden 14-11. Washington is back in it. Well, we asked, how would they respond? And we got a definite answer. <laughs> what a way to come back and start the second half. All right. That's well, funny. Can you it? believe it? Absolutely. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Donoski with a great reception. Actually, great patience by Damon Hewitt on that play. There is Richard. the star. Has he had a day or what? <laughs> His greatest day as a Husky. And all of a sudden, when we thought it would be 6-3 to three going into the locker room, it's 14-11. He's always been noted to have good hands coming out of the backfield on the receptions. And it's great timing to come out with the screen plays. Let's take a break and take a breath. Be right back. Number 40. Let's look at it again. The there foot goes, race. There goes Richard. Here comes Napoleon, number eight. I know he's just itching to get a hit on somebody. And a pretty good poke. At the helmet in front of Dennis Scott. Great speed by Richard Thomas. And then they go for two and look for number 19 in the back of the end zone. To be coming from your left side, Don. What yes. The person they were trying to go to here is just a little naked bootleg out to the right. On your right hand side, you see Mark Bruner there. Block and release. He was covered. Good job by Damon. Look back from the inside. It looked like a Joe Montana. Got a great catch. Is now Costa wants to go deep too. It's Ready to reach his No. 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 no play. Jones was the wide receiver. And Reggie was there. And he's probably thinking, never again will I let anybody go deep. No, there's Mr. Sapp. They got around Warren Sapp that time with a screen. Let him pursue with that great speed. Let him come right through the sieve and then set up the screen, which is exactly what they did. Wow. Richard Thomas. Second down and ten after the incomplete pass. They're in the third. Fumble? No. But good pursuit by the Huskies. As Deke Devers was involved. Haven't called his name many times today, but has certainly had a good year, to say the least. He did a great job of taking on the man who was attempting the block. Went right at his legs, fed him down, and also got the back. Zed Lenowski was the weak side tackle. Number 77. Third down and 11 for Washington, or rather for Miami. Jonathan Harris is the man in motion. Straight drop back, here comes the pressure. There's the pass, and it's Russell Harrison. Talk about justification. Russell Harrison is the man who gave up the touchdown, and now the pick for the TD. A 32-yard interception, and Costa is behind. And the 3,000 Washington fans are going bananas down in the corner of the stadium. Boy, did he make up for the pre-first half blues. Oh, my goodness. The Washington Huskies have taken the lead, 17-14. Here it is. Good look at it. Got a decent amount of pressure. The receiver comes down, obviously. Russell Harrison, please let me make up for the mistake in the first half. Boy, call it a clean slate, my friend. You have touchdowns in 10 quarters and we get two in about two minutes and one minute and 59 seconds Miami has seen two touchdowns scored against it John Wales will try to make it a four-point lead this is a huge kick and it is right down Broadway and Washington with an ever critical four-point lead 18-14, Norm Hitchkiss 
Yes, are you <laughs> watching? Absolutely. We'll be right back. minutes and one second to play. I don't know if Miami's a little assuming. And we know a lot can happen. And Russell Hairston, <laughs> all right. Good on you, pal. Good on you. That is the longest play against Miami during the 58 game win streak, Sonny. That is fantastic. Two great plays within two minutes. Boy, did we need that. <laughs> Amazing. Jim Lambright, Dennis Erickson, class of 61 on the left, class of 65 on the right. Everett High School to take a national holiday on Monday as these two are putting on a terrific game now. Kick by Wales will they go to German in the end zone and he'll bring it out. Everybody picking up the notch now. German still. Fumble! Fumble! Are they going to say it's down or not? Let's wait and see. Time is called. Husky! Washington ball! Oh my goodness! Lightning does strike twice. Jerry Jensen came up with it again. Great job. <laughs> oh, look at Lambo. <laughs> Jim Lambert just about having fit. Here it is again. This is how they beat Arizona State. Now Miami's losing it themselves. Tony, Tony Perrin. He is a scary guy. Tony Parrish is the one who made caused the fumble. Great job. Jerry Jensen getting in there and picking it up. Right there, the helmet in the arm, knocked it loose. Husky ball. Turnover number three, I believe, on Miami. Actually, Don, there's the guy to recover the fumble. It's Tony Perry. Tony broke it loose. Yes, yeah. and he got it. Good on it. First and 10 on the 23 of Miami. Hoffman. Slices down inside the 20. Everybody picking it up a notch. Yeah, Let's go in for two. Up. You're right. Let's pick this up, and we're only three points away. Yards on the first down call. Yeah, that's what they need to do now for the next 27 minutes. <laughs> Let's get another touchdown and see what happens. That's right. Malcolm Pearson with the stop. Timeout is called, an official's timeout. Got a Miami player who is down. And it might be. Is that Sapp? It is not Warren Sapp. Let's wait and see. I believe it's the DB, Malcolm Pearson. Pearson. Okay, it's Pearson. Thank you. Malcolm Pearson, who's the strong safety. Well, there they are. Good dogs. Out of the 3,000. I think I see Jamie Dorn in there. <laughs> They've all made the trip. Some guys were better than a week as they went on a cruise with. Coach James. Right now they're making as much noise as they possibly can. And the Miami fans are answering the challenge. Second down and six for Washington. Janowski and Bjornsson wide left. Hoffman uses the strength to get down to about the 15 yard line, short of the first. Now is when you need that muscle, Napoleon. There was a great battle going on in the interior line. I love to see it. Trevor Highfield, I kind of getting a liking of that kid anyway, but he took on that Warren Sapp and rode him into the ground. Juan Russell and the other linebacker, Ray Lewis, made the stop. Bjornsson and Janowski go out, so we got the muscle package in there now on third and three. Ernie Conrad, the tight end left, Bruner, tight end right, Cam Kissel at the wing. The backup fullback. Thomas is in there. Third and three. Going outside. First down. Washington down to the 10 yard line. Napoleon Kaufman. As the lights come on here at the Orange Bowl, you stop by C.J. Richardson. Jim Lambright's team is responding. Oh, is responding. Two, two quick turnovers by Miami. An interception by Russell Hairston. A fumble on the opening kickoff following that interception and touchdown. Washington trying to add to its four-point lead. 
finally saw a little example of Napoleon's quickness on that last play. We haven't seen much of that today. Hoffman again down to about the seven yard line. I'd love to know what's going on in the line of scrimmage right now, Sonny. Who is starting to be the, the more tired of the two? Well, there's a battle going on in there. And no matter what you can say, our guys on the offensive line could be tired. But actually, right now, it's not that muggy and it's not no. that hot. Not that bad at all. That's why we're seeing the Huskies surge by the offensive line. It's more effective now. They're getting more distance against that defensive line. The two defensive ends make the tackle on that last play. Second down and goal from the eight yard line. You know, last year the Miami Dol Miami Dolphins, the Miami Hurricanes had a lot of interior conflicts last year, not getting along with each other. We'll see how they respond. Let's go. Be right back. Chad Wilson there initially, and then Ray Lewis blows it in. There's Eric Battle, the offensive tackle. I'm not sure why he's on the sideline right now, unless he's just getting a rest. Steve Morton, offensive line coach, walking by Coach Lambert. So now, third down and eight. Damon Hewitt, what an education today. Third and eight, third and goal from the eight. Fumble, we got it. Is it in? It should be a touchdown if it's recovered in the end zone. Touchdown! All right! Must be a touchdown. I'm still waiting for the sign. Yeah, buddy. It is. There it is. The referee yeah. calling it a touchdown. Yeah. On third and eight, they go with the cornerback keeper. We'll have to look at the replay to see who recovered the ball. May have been 72, Robert Sapp. Keep a lock on the right tackle there. Good call down here in tight. Very good call. Very good decision by Damon to run up in there and get what he can. Ball comes out right about at the goal line, guy. 72, Robert Sapp. There's the ball. There's it is. It's yep. Sapp. Good man. All of a sudden, good call. So the touchdown counts, and now John Wales will attempt the extra point. And it is perfect. And the Huskies, all of a sudden, are up by 11, 25 to 14, and we are in Miami. Somebody pitch me. Jim Lambright. Now we'll see what the scheme calls for as Dennis Erickson find his team down by 11. He's probably arguing this call as well. 10-15 remaining third quarter. There's Mr. Sepp. Right tackle came in for Patrick on this play. There is a good job. Good cut up by Damon Heward right there. Eric Bornson out there trying to get a block. Ball's out already. Oh, there it is. Sapp took it with him into the end zone. <laughs> I wonder how many college touchdowns he scored. <laughs> Probably not too many. <laughs> Give me back to that cool zone. You gotta be happy. Drive itself to go 23 yards. Eating up two minutes and 42 seconds. Remember, this came after the interception and then the fumble on the following kickoff. Turnovers playing big time in this game. For 14 points so far. That's going to be a out of bounds and a flag. Damon Hewitt got it down to the one. Lost the ball. Looked like Pat Riley might have been the one to hit. Isn't this just the total opposite of their earlier games where they scored all their points in the first and second quarter, Sonny? Well, this is a great game to turn that stat around. <laughs> I love it in the second half down here. As the temperature drops, 
the energy for the Huskies seems to increase. Well, you know, it's too bad that ball went out of bounds, but they have such great returners that they probably would have run it up to the 30-35 anyway. But we do want to force them to run it back, not kick it out of bounds. Huskies are on a 22 to nothing roll right now. Remember, they were down 14-3 at half. We've only played four minutes and 45 seconds, and they have scored 22 points. A lot of work ahead of them. First and 10 from the 35 for Miami. Three wide outs to the left side with one at the top of your screen. On the ground, Stewart. A lot of room, gets around the corner, all the way up to the 46-yard line, and a first down for Miami. Gain of 11 yards. David Kilpatrick, one of the first to get to him, the linebacker. Husky defense has got to clamp down now. Lights very slowly starting to take effect down on the field. First to 10 from the 47. They take the two wideouts and put them at the right side this time. Looking for the two-step drop. Flag. As David Ritchie was ready to come in for the sack. <laughs> you give him a love tap that time. You're kidding. <laughs> Trying to get to him and there's a flag. Take another penalty. Let's get an official count on penalties on Miami today. Coaches like Lambright, look at Lambo's going, okay, I love it. First and 15. He loves to start out that way. Oh, five penalties, 15 yards. Five penalties. So it's first and 15, as Sonny pointed out, it's on the 41 yard line for Frank Costa. Finds himself in a very strange position, trailing here at the Orange Bowl. Formation with two wide outs to the right. Stewart to the back there. The goal of the quick release. Cutting back as Jones makes the reception. Oh my God. That's a heartbreaker as Costa was dead meat for the Huskies, but he got it away, and Jones is able to come up with a reception. Reggie Reeser was there defending. Great pressure on Costa this time. I don't know how he got the ball away. And Chris T. Jones, and one of those many Jones that you mentioned earlier, came up with a great catch. Reggie didn't turn back and see the ball as quickly as Jones did, number 85. Well, normally DBs do not react until they see the receiver's head look back. By that time, he was able to stop his momentum and come back to the ball. First and 10 for Miami. They're moving the ball and moving it quickly. All three wideouts to the right side. First and 10 from the 39 of Washington. Stewart tries to beat it inside. Still going. Gets another nine yards as Miami's offense is starting to grind up yards like hamburger. It's a little tough, Don, when these guys, you know, he breaks through the line of scrimmage and gets a yard or two downfield. You can't expect guys like Lamar Lyons to come up and tackle him single-handedly. We've got to get more bodies on that big guy. Richie Chambers finally coming in for the kill, but now it is second and very short. Only they call it three. It's a long two. Wimberly comes wide to the left side. Jones on the very top of your screen. Stewart again outside. No containment. Gets the first down all the way to the 22-yard line. Clock continues to roll. Boy, they're doing a nice job of closing down the corner for him to get around, Sonny. All their people, even their wideouts, that time Jonathan Harris, as you see on the left side of the screen, you'll see number three come up, get a little brush block on the end man. The rest is Mr. James Stewart. Right there, you saw it on Richie Chambers. Donovan Smith, too, really close You know, down. Jonathan Harris is 5'9", 170. We should be able to knock those guys back off. Chambers and Aliaga finally in on the tackle. Andrew Peterson trying to cool off and get back in there with the offense. First and 10 on the 23. Going for the touch pass into the end zone. Out of bounds, no flag. No face guarding either. It was nope. awful close. Pretty darn good play, I'd say, by Russell Hairston. Hairston, the man, tested in the corner. 
Here's a look on the left. Got Teal Green coming out. It's a little tough to tell from that angle. That didn't appear that he was face guarding. He was already out of bounds by the time that happened. Trainers coming out to uh, work on Green. Might have some cramps. Yeah, usually when you see him grabbing them big toes, it's a <laughs> cramp somewhere. Oh, the back of those thighs. I've had that happen where both thighs go at the same time. And you're ready to take the arsenic. It's, 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 it's <laughs> exactly. It's such pain. Give it to me now. You look for help, but nobody can help you. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing they can do. Stretch and stretch and stretch. 7.46 remaining in the third quarter. Coming into this game, Washington in the turnover margin is at a minus 1.0. Today, I think they're up one or two on Miami. And never have they been more important than the interception and then the fumble that resulted in two touchdowns for the Huskies as they lead 25 14. Midway through the third quarter. There it Here is, Don. Miami has three today. I love it. But Miami is marching the ball downfield and doing it effectively since that second touchdown by Washington. Second down and ten. Doing blitz. Stewart tries to get through the initial wave. Had he done so, he'd be gone. Lawyer Malloy with a tackle That's along with Devers. That was very close. You know, with that attacking style we have sometimes, we can get burnt with a quick bust up the middle. We were very lucky on that play. Good job, Lawyer Malone. Again, I was just going to say, geez, thank God he's on our side. <laughs> he was recruited by an awful lot of folks. Notre Dame wanted him for baseball and football. I, I think even Miami was trying to get the lawyer. I could be wrong with that, but I know there was some strong interest. Third down and seven from the 20. Brent Jones going in motion. Looking across the middle, incomplete. Intended for number 34, Derek Hick. Check that, Derek Harris, one of the backup tight ends. Going to bring up a 40 yard field goal attempt, and we'll see if this kid can kick it that far. He did close to that earlier in the bar, actually a little bit longer than that first quarter. Here it is again. As Harris came around, he backs up that was a tight end. Boy, the guy at the top of the screen was wide open in the flat. This will be a 38-yard attempt. He hit one from 38 in the first half. Bad snap. And he got it. So Miami has two 38-yard field goals, a 20-yard field goal. And the long pass before half. Well, those are the Miami Dolphins. Miami Hurricane cheerleaders. That's for you to decide. <laughs> so that closes the gap down to eight. 25 17. With another 38 yard field goal with 6.52 remaining here in the third. It would be great to see Nip get a nice return. Talked about him on special teams, trying to get him the ball in the punts and the kickoffs. And, you know, he's never broken one for a touchdown either way. This would be a great time to, one. to take the lead. Of course, Miami has to score twice. They could tie with a two-point conversion after a touchdown. But Washington will have something to say about that. As Rashawn Sheehy again shields Kaufman behind him, awaiting the kickoff. The offense this time, the defense inside the cool zone. Back here on the East Coast, it's three minutes after six. Want our guys to watch for an onside kick? You never know what these teams might do. Satellite kick, as they call them. Coffin's got to pick it up now. Looking for the Wentz. Bad field position, and a flag goes down at the 20-yard line as Napoleon goes down at the 14. 
12 yard return. And in the second half, Washington with total yards, 75 of those 95. And the hold on Washington, 75 coming from that screen. Antonio Culley made the tackle. It was not the man he held necessarily. But Jim Lambright's team with a lot of work ahead of them as they lead 25 17. 6 47 remaining in the third. Huskies down in the noisy end of the stadium as they walk the ball all the way back to their own seven yard line. I tell you, the crowd down here, the players work the crowd so much. You know, we're right on top of the field. There's no track going around. There's a good shot of it. The players are working the crowd. Plus, they have a beer, the beer man, you know, enticing the, the man. Yeah, enticing the crowd here. They call it officially the eight yard line. First and ten. Hoffman pops a big one up to the 20. Oh, football. The ground, he was down. He, he was, was down. He was indeed. Ground. He was grounded or down. My goodness, we're getting excited here. Kaufman <laughs> loses the ball, but not until he hits the ground. That's the way it should be in these kind of games, Don. <laughs> this is not good for my blood pressure. <laughs> this reminds me of when we all 91 back went back to Nebraska to take on the Cornhuskers. Here's a good burst. You'll see it up front. Watch those down linemen doing their job. Big Patrick, Big Ernie in there. The rest is Napoleon. Good balance right there. Put the hand down. Good tackle right there. Napoleon almost broke that from the distance. Here's another look at it right here. Earl Little coming up with the big. Actually, what he did is hit him right in the hip. I think he hurt himself on the Little play. is injured, yes. Number four, the defensive back. Which would uh, be two of their safeties injured today. Other one was Malcolm Pearson earlier. Yes, he is hurt. Earl Little, a sophomore out of nearby North Miami. So far today, we've had more of their players walking off the field than Huskies. Here's a shot right here, Earl Little. Oh, it looks like he landed on the back of Napoleon's heel. Yeah, Could have caught his right arm. Yeah, you hear something down below his waist. That's oh, is that where it was? Yeah. Okay. First and ten from the 28-yard line. Ernie Conwell for another nine, maybe ten-yard gain. They keep the clock running. Stopped by C.J. Richardson, the free safety. I think he may have gotten a first down on that play. Great catch by Ernie. There he is, the big kid from Kent. What a great family. Not bad for somebody with a fractured right thumb. That's right. Here he is. This is a play we've used three or four times today with the tight end just going to the near flat. There he is releasing downfield, probably about five, six yards. Excellent throw. That was a great throw by David Heward. Uh, it took a little bit of a risk, but he got it in there. They will measure for the first down as Warren Sapp is being sapped of strength, you may say, but there's still a long way to go. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> and probably used by 600 other announcers <laughs> prior to this time. Ernie's the man you had a chance to talk with on the airplane coming down here to Miami. That's right. He was eager to play. He wanted to go after him straight on, do his blocking, which he really gets a thrill out of doing. Yeah, he wanted to play some X mouth. Just That's exactly. Let's fire straight ahead. I'd rather see him catch those kind of passes for first downs. <laughs> <laughs> so they give them the first down. It is first and ten on the 38-yard line. Now is where you'd love to see Napoleon Kaufman and Richard Thomas grind it out. Kaufman tried to pop it outside, but was tripped up by number 45, Twan Russell. Got about three yards. Clock is under six minutes in the third quarter. Napoleon up to Napoleon up to 58. Remember, he needs 78 to become the all-time ground gainer. Or rusher. That's right. Those are 58 very tough physical yards for him today. Toughest uh, 58 yards he's ever earned, I would say, Sonny. That's right. Second down and seven. Ball on the 41 yard line of Washington. Richard Thomas comes wide right. Both receivers wide left. Got to get it out of there now. Does a good job of just tucking it under him and call it a coverage sack, but may have actually gotten a yard out of it. Baraka short, number 50, the first to get there. Good job. I didn't see anybody open downfield. It's been a tough throw. Ernie 
excuse me, Mr. Bruner may have had a chance to be open, but it have been a very tough pass. Third and long for the Dogs. Third down, seven. Here comes the crowd in the Orange Bowl. Bjornsson at the top of your screen, Janowski at the bottom. Mark's open. First down, Bruner to the 50 and down to the 46-yard oh. line. How's that for second effort? I'll tell you what, there better be some scouts in this stadium today because if I needed a tight end in the pros, that's the guy. Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker, along with the cornerback, Dennis Scott, on the tackle. Lower part of the screen, you can see him releasing through, underneath, through the linebackers, and actually behind the far side line, linebacker, James Burgess, got lost in coverage. Here's where he does a great job. Took on the tackler and lunged for extra yardage. One of the nicest young men you could ever want to know. He's the kind of guy you'd want your daughters to marry. How's that for the ultimate guy? Wow. <laughs> Mine are a little young though. First and ten. One pop going deep. Bjornsson got a bleep out of bounds at the 12, 13 yard line. Bjornsson again reaching over the defender like he did against Ohio State. Dennis Scott, he's arguing that he didn't either have control or he intercepted the ball before he went out of bounds. All Let's you need see. is one foot. That was a great pass. One foot down. Yeah, two. In two. Me. He the may have taken team. that ball out. He may have stripped the ball away, yes. Dennis Play Scott. 34 yards. So for Washington, it is first and 10 on the 12 yard line of Miami. Coleman and Janowski to the left side. They go to Napoleon, and he gets jammed up royally. Great penetration by a host of Miami players, including Marley. Rowan Marley, the junior who is seeing more action. Here's the catch. One foot down, two feet. Yep, he intercepted that pass. That was a steal. <laughs> that was Miami ball, I think. Very close. They're not Pac-10 officials. No, you can't blame them on that. Big East crew today. Second down at 13. Top of the drop. Tries to get outside. Down to the 12. Back to the original line of scrimmage. He had one more man to beat, and he would have uh, done a lot of damage. Ray Lewis is the man he could not beat. Fred Coleman, 22, the freshman, out there trying to maintain his block at the top of the screen. He was able to hang onto that block just a little bit longer. I believe Napoleon could have gone to the, to the end zone. This is the ninth play. This one here of this drive. Remember, we had just under six minutes remaining in the third quarter when it began. And they're eating up the clock and doing it well. Big play was the pass to Bjornsson. Third down and ten. They need to get down inside the three for a first. They show blitz all the way. Into the end zone way too far. Trying to throw it away instead of risking the interception or the sack. So it's John Wales' turn to come on the field again for a field goal as Kennard Lang and Ray Lewis were putting the heat on the quarterback. Okay, so now do you fake it? I say we kick it. We'll go up 28-17. We've still got to score twice. We're back to the 11. I get the three points. Looks like a 29-yard field goal attempt. He already has a 47-yarder. That snap. It's oh, good. Gosh. Oh, my goodness. It barely cleared the crossbar. Another bad snap. They've been there all day. We have seen every field goal has been a bad snap. Nevertheless, the Huskies come up with another three points with the 29-yard field goal. Here it is again. Oh, oh George. boy. He did it now. <laughs> Eric Gorton may have to get a game ball just for being able to catch these snaps. I think you're right. 29-yard field goal. That makes it 28-17. 
stay in the lead, let alone stay in the game, I think the stronger they'll become. Well, so far we're staying with them, but as we talked earlier, humidity's still here. I know we mentioned it's not that hot. Maybe it's gone down a little bit. We were worried about the fourth quarter, so we'll see how our dogs respond. Sunny six killer. I'm Don Poyer. Equally sweaty. Well, okay, good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> High short kick by Whale. Shipman cuts back. Now has an opening and finally brought down to the 29 yard line. Rashad Sheehy on the tackle, number one, on that 11 yard return. Shipman is a very dangerous girl. The Huskies have 17 minutes and 12 seconds to go. They could snap a win streak at a home called the Orange Bowl that has gone on for nine years. Trips, three of them to the left side and two to the right. They are spreading it out now. They go to German. German inside, check it up to the 42 and a first down. Steve Hoffman again tattooed Frank Costa big time after that pass play. Mikey Waliko made the tackle. And it looks like maybe this is what Dennis wants to do. He's bringing in all five wideouts, Sonny. He's got all five out there, just playing a simple game on the top. One goes deep, one breaks underneath. That wears on you after a while. Sure does. He feels it. Might have wrenched his left knee. First and ten from the 42-yard line. Flag down. Ooh, they were sending out the Aga that time too. How are we going to be on Washington? Look like motion. It'll be on Miami. Unofficially, that is six penalties on Miami, and all of them being. Illegal motion, illegal procedure. What do we call that, Don? Six. Concentration. So you got it. Up. That's right. Wait for the snap. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. That's why I hated playing offense. I could never remember the snap count. I have to wait. <laughs> Move it to the ball. That's all I could do. Through the miss, the Huskies hold on. First and 15 from the 37. And Costa trying a quarterback sneak, which can work on occasion. We saw Jim Zorn use it and make a career out of it in the NFL. Still a strange call for first and 15. Rich Olson is the offensive coordinator down here for Miami. You might remember that name. He was a uh, quarterback for the Cougars back in the 69 season, I believe, under Jim Sweeney. Been a few years, a few years under Jim in Fresno State. A couple of years as a receiver coach here under Dennis, and now is the OC. Second down and 13. Again, five wideouts. Across the middle. There's Evan German. He's the man that's so dangerous, and what a hit! Who came in? It was Iwaliko who came up with a hit on German. Jamie is still down. Mike Iwaliko absolutely riveted Jamie German to the turf. That was a major hit. Another <laughs> hurricane hits the grass. Here's that play we talked about earlier in the game from the shotgun formation. They just run an underneath route. Here comes Jamie German. Here comes Mikey Waliko down to the right. You see him on the top there. Oh, oh my goodness, that even snapped the head. He's lucky he held on to the football. They have talked about Mikey Waliko for years. Well, I talked to him on the plane, Don, and he was primed to play this game. He is a junior. We were talking about him after the 91 title season, about maybe being the next dominant lightning fast lineman for 
the Huskies, and he is beginning to come into his own. A good example. This man parallel to the ground right now. Jamie, who broke a couple of big ones against Arizona State, is just a youngster. Only a sophomore getting his first play. And had six catches coming into this game for Dennis Erickson. One other guy from his hometown is who? None other than Neon Dion. Dion Sanders. Same high school. Is. Exactly. And we all know about high schools when it comes to Jim Lambright and Dennis Erickson. Two of those coaches out of Snohomish County. Coaches Crater. Here's the hit again. He really. That may have separated his left shoulder. It's hard to tell from that hit, but uh, he landed all, all weight on that. He will equal weighing over 260 pounds. This does not exactly give Miami a lot of momentum or trying to maintain any kind of momentum with an injury like this, and they're taking a long time, which tells me it's a head or neck injury. Well, this is great. It gives our defense a, an unexpected five-minute break. Eerie sight, isn't it? Sure miss at night. <laughs> Napoleon Cotton, who has had a terrific second half. Official attendance tonight, 62,663. We have exactly 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And now the Husky defense goes over to the sideline. Well, it's hard to tell what's going on in there, Don. Look at all those guys attending to him. Well, anytime it's this bad, like I say, it's a neck or a head injury, and you saw his head snap around when Iwaliko came in there. Let's take a timeout. Be right back. off the field even trotted off the field under his own power but as soon as they get him into the right week <laughs> then they'll make sure he's, he's okay he's probably take a pretty sharp hit to the noggin oh to set you up since that time out 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter 28 17 which by the way was the score Washington defeated Oklahoma by in 1985 in the Orange Bowl Way to pull that one out, Don. Great. First and ten from the Husky 47-yard line. Hey, the rates are going. That is not going to be the final score. Either team. And still more holdups. Referees now giving Costa the go-ahead. Here we go. There was German when he was injured earlier. This is a replay by ABC. Now we go back to live action. Going deep all the way. And that time the coverage is there by Russell Hairston. I tell you what, Ace Allison <laughs> number 18 was wide open. Look at the smile. Do you see the smile though on Russell Hairston's oh. face? I was there. So Tellison was open where? On the left side? He was open on the far hash mark, running down in the seam. Still a long out. It's second down and ten. Well, I tell you, Klaus is not afraid to throw it deep, is he? Well, why not? That speedy out there, I'll tell you, those receivers are great. Second and ten, he's got five wideouts again. Two to the right, three to the left. Shotgun. Jamie German back into the ball game. Down he goes at the 41-yard line of Washington, short of the first down. It'll be third down and probably three yards. A long three. Here we go, Costa from the shotgun. Again, the same play, just a little under route. There's Jamie. He wasn't out very long. He must have came to his senses real quick. <laughs> they got off the calendar and said, you're right here, the 24th. And the third quarter is in the books. And the Washington Huskies are waving to their fans in the stands. They know they're 15 minutes away from possibly, possibly making some history.
in the final stanza of the fourth quarter with Washington leading Miami, ranked number six in the country, the 17th ranked Huskies, 28-17. I'm Don Boyer along with Sonny Sixkiller. Washington came into this game leading the Pac-10 with 12 sacks. They need one now as we look at the numbers up to this point. The three turnovers to Washington's two. Now Washington in total yards, only 20 yards behind the Hurricanes. Passing yards, they have surpassed the Hurricanes. Third down conversion. Not bad for Washington at all. Seven of 13 and the time of possession, almost five minutes more. Third down and four is what Washington's looking at right now. The ball is on their own 41 yard line. And they'll probably, yes, they do. They go again with the five wideouts continuing to spread the field, which creates more opportunities on one on ones and to break the big play. Right now, there comes the rise. Got it away! David Gilpatrick, the middle linebacker. He came through the guard hole. Nobody there. Batted the ball down. It's fourth down and four. Here it is, David Kilpatrick. I don't know why Costa thought he could get that ball through those arms. He should have just eaten it or tried to elude the, the rush and get outside and get what he could. One side step. They're going to go for it on foot. They need to get down to the 37 of Washington. Didn't get it. Wait a minute. Let's see. Oh, they marked it at the 36. Yes, they did. They do get it, but not by much. There's a replay coming up again. They use that. They don't think it's a quick step. He's in the shotgun already. He's already back in his pocket. Just a quick throw out to five, eight yards. That's all they need. So it'll be first and 10 from the 35 yard line. Same formation. Five wide receivers. Cost just standing back there, picking away. Jamie German gets another first down. Ball to the 21 yard line. Jamie hamming it up for the crowd, brings it to its feet. Richie Chambers makes the stop, the outside linebacker. Tough thing for Washington is when they're so spread out like that, can you take as many chances? Can you send linebackers as often as you'd like to? Well, that's call. Yeah, against that speed, yeah, you got to be equal speed to maintain that man to man coverage for to do that. And then they have the impetus, though, if you stay back and read. First and 10 from the 21. Jamie again gets away from Harrison. Down inside the 10 to the 8 yard line. Russell's going to have to start picking it up a notch again. They've been throwing a couple passes his way. They must feel like they have his number on this side. But if they do make the reception, you've got to make the tackle. Tony Parrish finally making the catch here at the tackle that time. Number seven on seven, Jamie German. He's played a great game today. I don't know if he'll remember it, but he did play a good day so far. He'll love the highlight package. First and goal from the eight yard line. Again, five wide receivers and the shotgun. Tight coverage played by the Huskies. They go into the corner and nobody's there. Don, I tell you, A.C. Tellison, 18, was to the near side. Nobody was on him from the Huskies. That's why he's got his hand up. Hey, I was open. He's been the neglected man today. You've seen him two or three other times open. I suppose if you drop a few passes on me, I may not look your way either. That's true. He was the one who dropped it prior to the end of half. Twelfth play of this drive for Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes. Record of 57 and 5. As the coach here at Miami, winning his coach in NCAA Football Division 1 A in the last five years. Second and eight. They send one linebacker, Kilpatrick, the pass behind German that time. And German is down again. So is a Husky. Russell Hairston. Those two have had a battle today, haven't they? 
They really have. And uh, I'll tell you what, we need to make a little change here. AC Tellison is being covered by Richie Chambers, number 32. I know Richie's quick, but I don't think he's fast up there to his speed. Not to match somebody like Tellison. So it is third and goal from the eight yard line. Huskies have given up on the one touchdown today. There have been field goals of 20, 38, 38. And the 151 yard prayer that they connected on in the first half. Third and goal from the eight. Three to the left, two to the right. Shotgun. Across the middle, incomplete. Looking for number 22, Tony Gator. That's two passes in a row. Frank Costa has thrown behind the receiver. Russell Harrison actually got lucky on the previous play because his man with a good pass would have had it. Here's a good look at the coverage. Look at the way they spread that field out. Don Team, any Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the place. Our guys are doing a tremendous job right now. Here he comes, breaking underneath and under right again. Did you see how they had everybody back? 25-yard field goal attempt now by Miami. And it is good. So Pruitt has been a busy guy. He has got a 20, 38, 38, and 25-yard field goal. Twenty-five yard field goal. Let's take a timeout. Washington holding on with thirteen forty six left in the game. Driving to 35, thanks to their kicker. Now you would like, as you see, 204 yards for the day. His best ever day was roughly uh, 274 yards, 247 rather. So he's up there close. Let's get Kaufman's numbers too. Let's see where he's at now. 59 yards, 19 away from the all time mark. And now Washington needs to grind it out. 13.46 left in the game. First and 10 from the 35. Coffin right off the bat. Not much there, maybe two yards. Brought down by Kenny Holmes, the defensive end, along with Rowan Marley, number two. Gain of two. It'll be an eight yard, second down and eight yard situation as Holmes is now down. The sophomore defensive end out of Vero Beach who came into the game with 10 tackles. Five of those being solo. And he's in serious pain. It's hard to tell what's going on here. Is it well, exhaustion or? <laughs> best of my recollection, the only Husky to be down was Russell Harrison for a few moments. Anybody in the first half? I can't think of it. I can't either. Anyway. So far, that uh, training of Coach Lambright with those uh, wind sprints at any time of practice seems to have paid off. Let's go back a moment at the last play and see if we can spot where Kenny might have been injured. Oh, I see. Marley pushed Kaufman back and stretched his head back. Could have been the net. Because he's got his legs, he's running off the field. He's going in the back. Says, I'm not supposed to bend that direction. <laughs> Let's go down the field, 13 minutes, second and eight. Take it down and get some points. We'll also catch on Bruner's total receptions today, too, because he may be nearing another record. Five catches. We'll get to that in a moment. Second down and eight. Still has it. Picks up at least five. 
It'll be third in about five. Good heads he play, and another Miami Hurricane is down on the sideline. This time, it's Baraka Short. Says he's okay. So he's up to the 40-yard line, that being Damon. It'll be third and even five. Short will have to come out. There you see him. This is exciting. I love it. I've been around some great games, and this is right up there. Let's be looking for number 85, find out where he is on this play. Third and five. Need to get to the 45. First down, Washington, Bjorkson. Knew exactly where to go and did so. He was against Short, Carlos Lucky. Jones. And Bjorkson won as Eric Battle is getting stretched. Ball's on the left hash mark, the top of the screen. Eric down near the numbers here. This is a very long throw, yes. especially going against a guy like Carlos Jones, who is the fastest player on their defensive side. Give him a lot of room, too. Good six, seven yards. Was not playing tight on him at all. That was one of the things that Jim was so happy about was the way his quarterback checked off against Ohio State. Did such a great job, including that 38-yard run for a touchdown by the bully. First and 10 from the 46, the clock down to 12 and a half minutes in the fourth quarter. Hoffman, can he get outside? One more to beat. Down to the 47-yard line, short of the first, but a good nifty run by Napoleon. Speed against speed. Does Carlos Jones have to pay for that ride? <laughs> he was the one who <laughs> finally hauled him down with Ray Lewis. Here's a job, or here's a shot of Napoleon doing the job, I should say. Again, trying to go into the middle of the line of scrimmage. Right there, you can tell they're really jamming it up. He has to go outside. Mr. Carlos Jones, let me go for a ride for about three or four yards. Damon's doing a great job of using the clock. I can see the play clock. You wait until it's down to about seven, six, five. Then he'll start to count. Game clock, 11.42, 41. Cochran is jammed up, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Two very good football teams. Leaving it all on the field today. Some of the mist from those cool zones on the Husky side of the field. The mist is blowing out on the field. It almost feels like an Everett High School football game with the fog rolling in from Puget Sound. Third down and four. Showing blitz. Got it leaped to the 42-yard line. They got it by a yard, and it's Janowski. Big David coming up with a big hand. Damon Heward is showing us a lot today, too. He's on the inside of this twin set to the near side here, Don. You can see C.J. Richardson playing him inside out, giving him the outside break. Clearly, there was a perfect play. Good job. Outstanding. Washington, they've got the clock still running down to 10 45, 44, 43. Play clock 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Look at the high formation, just one wide receiver. Leon Neal, first carry down to the 37 yard line. Big first down play. That's great yard. Boy, Chad Wilson, number nine, is going to remember that one. Chad was the one who made the tackle, but he paid for his ticket, didn't he? <laughs> no free pass. I'll tell you, Miami spent a lot of time on the turf. I'll tell you what, no matter what happens in this ballgame, they better give Washington some credit. Very, very physical game. These were excited. Hoffman now up to 65 yards. It's only 13 more yards, and history will be made. Could be a lot of history made today. We'll see. Richard Thomas, there's the strength of that offensive line. He's short of the first, but remember, that's only second down. 
Great surge by the offensive line, Sonny. That's absolutely. I love seeing big fullback carrying him load up in the middle. And you really need that. And, you know, to help Napoleon, even at this stage, you control the line of scrimmage, you control the ball. Here's Richard, three yards, four yards back from center. Straight ahead. That's a little that smash mouth we were talking about earlier. Did you see Warren Sapp's first move? Huh? Like you're tired? Mm -hmm. And he came backward rather than firing out. And I don't think he was trying to hit a seam. It appears that Husky Line is starting to handle the line of scrimmage. Third down. They need a long one. There's the pitch. First down, Washington. Great pitch by Damon. That's a Outstanding job, and Napoleon, he knifed through there. I don't know how he got through there for the first down. And I'll tell you something else, his backfield barely got set in time. Yes, got very close to a flag. Look at this, knifing right through the defense, knowing where he had to go to get the first down. Let's keep the numbers on Heward. He's up to 73 yards. He's only five more. Napoleon, there he is, 73. Coach the back of the Vincent. Coordinator for Dennis Erickson. Washington, they have used the clock beautifully. Starting at 13.46, it's at 8.20. Hoffman. Close to the all-time record. He hit C.J. Richardson. Whoa. Knocked him back. Look, look where he's at. It looked like Joe look Frazier. Look at his eyes. Did you see his eyes? He's dazed. He's dazed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, let's listen to it. Can't hear it. My apologies. You thought we might have heard it. But you're right. He sent him halfway into Dade County. <laughs> yeah, he came off the field. He's on the sidelines. So did Coffin, by the way. Second down and four. Richard Thomas. He lost that battle. Ray Lewis was there along with number 45, Tuan Russell, and Russell is hurt now. It is a war of the will. One of those two linebackers had to take the brunt of Richard Thomas. Maybe we can get a shot here to see Tuan Russell 45, Ray Lewis 52. They're both going to get shoulder pads on Richard, and I think Tuan Russell felt the brunt of that. Russell is still down. Don, I'm looking at both these squads on the field. Our guys, one guy's on a knee. Everybody else is up. They're trying for the game. Miami literally looks like they're running out of gas. Well, they're they're running in. We said all week, didn't we, Sonny, that coming into this game, that Miami has not faced a team nearly as physical as Washington, as they attend to Napoleon. It is now official. Should he not lose any yards today, he is the all-time leading rusher. We were just pointing out before seeing the numbers that uh, they're taking care of him. He took a good shot, too, against C.J. Richardson. Both paid the price. Washington, by the way, three of three on third down conversion. He's yeah, moving that particular alive drive. And really, excuse me, Don, but he's moving that right shoulder. Looks like he's in a little bit of pain sitting on the sidelines. Of course, I've been hearing all of saw his head move a little strangely, too, on that collision. He's got some pain. Ronnie Milas, secondary coach, coming over to see how he's doing. I, I ran out on him to clean up again. Pain. He's been hammered a lot today, but he's he got that record, and he deserves every yard he gained. 7-15 remaining in the game. John Wales waiting in the wing. He's had success from 47 yards and 29 yards. Could he hit another field goal? That would give Washington that 11-point lead again. Making Miami score at least on two occasions. So after the delay and the injuries, Washington now looks at a third down and four predicament. Hoping to get down to the 20 yard line. Boy, they're playing the serious music out here now in the Orange Bowl. Whew. Boy, looking through the fog with that kind of Star Wars music. Third and four, and it's a power formation. 
Tight coverage on Bjorkson left. He's waiting for the play clock to go down to eight, seven, six. Bruner incomplete. Great play, though. Nice idea as Earl Little knocked it away. Lost his footing on the play. <laughs> Ernie Conwell was wide open. Or is that Mark Bruner? I believe that is hard to tell from here. Flag Let's was dropped in the Burton lead. There's no flag. I believe that is Ernie rather than Bruner. Ernie Conwell was the intended receiver. It's getting dark in the orange bowl. Easy to make a mistake. Those guys are such clones. And again, here's the concern. It's the right shoulder. Possible separation, maybe. 42-yard field goal attempt. Let's watch the snap, Don. It is good, and he's never had a bigger one. 42-yard field goal by John Wales, and the lead is back to 11. Dennis Erickson and the Hurricanes must score on two occasions. Timeout. Helmets are up. It is time for the Huskies to kick off after a seven-minute drive that brought them another three points, leading by 11. Wales with a kick. And this one sails beyond the end zone, and Miami will start again on the 20-yard line. John Wales is having a career day. He is not player of the week in the Pac-10. I don't know who will be. It's nice to have the wind in the fourth quarter at your back and not theirs. John has had a 47-yarder, 42-yarder, and a 29-yarder. The 42-yarder just now coming, and that one is like gold going over. Oh, those three points are huge. No big plays, no big plays. No, well, you're going to give up some big-time yardage here. You know that because you want to not give up a big play, but at the same time, don't let them march too easily. First and 10 from the 20. Ricky Chambers. It's away, however. Here comes Costa all the way up to the 35-yard line. First down, a gain of about 15. Boy, how we missed him on this play. Great job by him, though. You have to give him a lot of credit for avoiding the rush. Very good play. Oh, Richie. Richie missed him. And the chance. So it is first and ten from the 36. Green. Green little screen inside. They saw it coming, however, and boy, did Jason Chorick ever see it <laughs> from the inside. And I think it was Richie Chambers from the outside. Do you think the Huskies watched a lot of game film against Arizona State in Miami? <laughs> Jamie German, he also will remember this game. As you mentioned, he may or may not. Jason Chorak, 6'4", 260. Great job for the freshman. He's the one that was always getting in the fights, you know, in spring spring football. Feisty, Richard freshman. You gotta love a guy like that. Second down and 11, a loss of one. Costa. Tried to uh, quick hop that one. Third down and 11. That'll happen sometimes when you're throwing on the run. You don't have your feet in the right position to deliver the throw. And look at that's exactly what happened on that play. Here we'll get a look at it on the left side, top of the screen. Decent rush. He's looking down in the middle. Nobody open in the middle, so he comes up. Yep. Yep. That's a tough throw. But he's supposed to make those. Third and 11 from the 35. Five wideouts again. Three left, two right. Here comes the rush. He Galliaga on the blitz. Got a man wide open. First down. And that is where Green is the receiver. Yadio Green. That'll move the sticks. 5.33 remaining in the game. 
14 yard play that time to Uteo. First and 10 from the 49 of Miami. Clock running again, 525, 24. Three wide outs to the right side or the wide side of the field. Short pressure. Intercepted, yes indeed. Husky ball, it's Richie Chambers who can get some serious yardage. Still going and knocked out of bounds. Oh. On the 30 yard line to the 26 yard line. Husky ball, and it may be their game. Oh. Oh. God, it almost appeared like from the down line and went back as a linebacker. It was, sure. it was Steve Hoffman, I yes. think. 29 yard return for Richie Chambers. Oh, the pit drill is always so important. They did this last year with great success. They'll do it at any time of the ball game. And boy, they work out that time. I really do think that was Steve Hoffman back there. I could be wrong, but we'll see. There he is, right there. there. Yeah, there he is, 91. <laughs> <laughs> six, <that's laughs> I was hoping to see it. Now, there's something you haven't seen in nine years. People leaving, knowing that they probably lost the game. It ain't over yet, folks, but let's see. Now they got to keep it on the ground. A sore shoulder and all. Napoleon Kaufman comes in. Gets it down to about the 23-yard line. 4.53, 52. I have never seen a clock move so slowly than tonight. Here's the pick again. Look for... I believe it was... There it is. There is. That's Steve. it. It's Hoffman. They don't expect it. Oh, Steve. Oh, he got to it. <laughs> oh boy, Steve's gonna take a round of count. <laughs> I'm gonna give him one. <laughs> 29 yard return by Richie. It is second and eight from the 23. Hoffman trying to go outside, gets a lead block, squirts through, all the way down to the 10 yard line, maybe the nine. First down, but let's see what the flag is about, and it's right on the line of scrimmage. Holding Washington. Is the preliminary call. Napoleon looks like a ragged warrior, doesn't he? Look at the marks on that helmet. Finally gets away for a decent run. We get a penalty called on us. Maybe that's why he got that far. The offensive line has made it very clear. They will do anything they can to move their running back. Napoleon, you haven't hurt yourself at all with your performance today. No, it wasn't 211 yards. You spoiled us after seeing you against Ohio State. But you may have brought one of the biggest wins Holding for the, the offense, 10 yard penalty. Still second. You hate to see the major penalties, though, when we're trying to run out the clock. Great field position on the 25. Now we're back. Second down and 18, Sonny, back on the 33 yard line. And it's getting dark, as you can tell. The lights have clearly taken effect. 81 yards so far. Has the record by three. Penalty negating that last significant game. Second and 18. Still with it, Leon Neal. Down to the 12. Big man, Baz, he's got, yes indeed. Many a flag goes down as Leon Neal was yanked OB by the face mask. Hate to see that by a leader like Ray Lewis, number 52. Just make the tackle. You don't need to do any of that kind of stuff. Watch. We talked about Leon Neal. Look at this. Great move. See, let go right there. Oh, my goodness. Flagrant. That'll be a major. 13 yard run by Neal and tack on the penalty as Neal goes out and number eight comes in. I'd love to see Nip get in the end zone. Big win like this if we can hang on. 346. Well, when you get a big running play like that on second and 18, you know that your opponent must be getting tired. That's exactly true. We mentioned that a little while ago. Our guys look like they still have their leg. Dennis is going to get his victory. You know that. I know this game, as he put it, was very, very important. 
again the yank by Lewis. First and ten. In fact, it is first and goal from the ten yard line. Yorkson wide as Cotton gets it again. Gets maybe a yard as Tuan Russell is the first to get to him. And the clock continues to roll. This will rank up there with the victory over Nebraska in 91. Oh, my. Oh, I, this is so great. I just we're, can't. The feeling is. We're seeing some real history. I've said that a hundred times today. But a lot of the 59s on the signs are coming down. There was one earlier. It was 58 and 1. The one was in purple. <laughs> and it was in the Husky <laughs> session. It's still up. Jim Lambright, he's got to be going crazy. At 3.05, 304 to go. Coffman just trying to hold on to the ball now and somehow get into the end zone or at least a field goal. And keep the ball in the middle of the field. Right. An Everett Seagull against an Everett Seagull. 65 in the class of 61. We had to travel 3,000 miles to see this grand affair. Timeout has been called by Miami. And let's do the same. Less than three minutes to go, and the Huskies could snap the spring. 